Salam alaikum, everybody. How are you doing? Okay, I can see in the in the comments people are saying why why this extra hour and such. Well, here in Blighty, we've gone back an hour. Um, so our times have changed. So yeah, I don't know where you are in the world, but you may have gone forward an hour. Okay, it's better for us now anyway because, like I say, I, I grab hold of the Sheikh um, and all you American dudes. Um, Later than Jummah, because Friday obviously clashes with Jummah, so now we've got a later, so that's cool. Um, I hope everyone's well. Um, yeah, so welcome to the arena it, again. It, just to reiterate what it's about, it's for non-Muslims to either directly challenge Islam and its teachings or to present their worldview as the truth of reality and by default dismissing Islam, yeah? So if you're a Christian, you can come on, you can have a challenge Islam, you can challenge the Quran, you can try to challenge the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and such. Or you can try to bring such a strong case with Christianity that Islam must be false by default if Christianity is true. Also, if you're an atheist and you want to come on and demonstrate as I was theists are crazy for believing in this sky wizard, believing that in this heaven and this hellfire and miracles and that everything's rational and everything should be natural explanations and everything. If you're an atheist, you're welcome to come and do that as well. And again, by default, even without even mentioning Islam, if you can demonstrate to us that your natural explanations of, you know, the origination of the universe and life and all of these things is a rational position to take, then you can by default dismiss Islam and at the same time if you can't challenge Islam then by default you're all wrong all right so without further ado I'll bring on today's gladiators mashallah so Sheikh Uthman salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh welcome back to the arena salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh good to be back it's been a while missing you guys seems like ages man subhanallah alhamdulillah you, every time I ring you're traveling you Texas, yeah, and yeah, alhamdulillah. I was in was Hawaii, Syria, and Mecca, and Medina, and Hawaii, oh. Portland, Texas, trying to grow the da'wah, man. Alhamdulillah, Allah, great Akbar. response. Everybody in the two blessed cities, and uh, in Dallas, and Portland, and everywhere, mashallah, may Allah reward all the brothers. A lot of good uh, new shahadas. You can see the One Message Foundation, you'll see the shahadas in Portland, Allah, and Allah. Dallas. So, alhamdulillah, Allah accepted from all of us. Beautiful, mashallah. Did you get recognized when you was in like Mecca, Medina? I did surprisingly. I, would, I never expected, but uh, I was even walking in the Haram in Medina, and I had my mask on and everything. And people just, you know, because we we kept the events very low key because of COVID, and we just got too many people, so we were not telling people where I was or anything. So people drove from like Jeddah. Some brothers flew from Riyadh without even contacting us. They were just walking around Medina, to looking for me, which really kind of threw me off, you know. Uh -huh. I was wearing a mask and everything, and the brothers like, Sheikh Osman. I'm like. <laughs> Uh, my name is Osman, but you're probably looking for somebody else. <laughs> they were like, no, oh, we, we came from Jeddah. We're just looking for you. I was like, oh, I'm glad we ran into each other because oh, that would have well, sucked. Well, well, well. So oh, alhamdulillah, that was very good. Beautiful stuff. Right, and then we've got Pondering Soul. Salam alaikum, bro. Salam alaikum, salam wa How are you doing, bro? Alhamdulillah. You're, you're, you're what I like to think is the voice of reason. Like I've said before, you kind of like. Oh, what? I'm unreasonable or what? No, no, no. He take he kind of <laughs> I'm like. Just kidding, I'm just kidding. His empathy is so strong, he actually joins them. The, the people, if he feels that we're bullying them a little bit, Carlos being an example. <laughs> How are you doing, bro? Stand. Yeah, alhamdulillah, not bad. Not bad. What? Mashallah, alhamdulillah. Good to see you, man. You see um, you. Khalil, mashallah. Assalamu alaikum, Afi. Assalamu alaikum. Fresh from the streets of Clubhouse. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, how are you? Well, Hamza, uh, yeah, man. tearing it up in there, man. Alhamdulillah. 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 Fellow American, how you doing, bro? Alhamdulillah, <laughs> From New Jersey. Uh, actually, I said that in a crazy... Ooh. One second. <coughs> Just bear me a second. And last but no means least, hey, Asadullah. Assalamu alaikum, bro. Wa alaikum, assalamu alaikum. How are you, my man? Assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum. Looks, looks like America's taking over. Again. <laughs> I know you pesky Yanks. Yeah, it is honestly. <laughs> I, I need well, to make this earlier this uh on a Friday, isn't it? 8 <laughs> then we'll just cancel them out by default. All right. So um Fear yeah, the great so let me put a link out there. Um we'll decide whether we're gonna let Robs and Rays and that on, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, I know, I know, I know. All right, you know, you guys chat amongst yourselves just while I do all this messing around a so. Uh, Khalil, you're in New Jersey. Asadullah, where are you at? Uh, Atlanta. 
We just won the World ah, Series. Georgia. Mashallah. <laughs> yeah. Mashallah, you're looking for Baseball. <laughs> All right, man. Come on, man. I don't watch cricket. I'm going to disappoint everybody here. I don't watch cricket. I don't watch football. I don't watch basketball. I don't watch baseball. I don't watch soccer. You don't watch <laughs> football. Like, Pakistan won. I'm like, what were they playing? I have no <laughs> idea. Which football are you on about now? Because you, uh, Americans. Either one. Either one. <laughs> I don't. I don't watch any of them. Uh, so. uh, we, we call we call football soccer for some hey, odd reason, at, and then we at least call... in our football, we don't fake our injuries. <laughs> yeah, I've heard, I've heard yeah, yeah. that's a problem with. Uh... So, <laughs> hey, let me uh, let me let me give the Brits some credit, man. At least in their football, they use their foot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Your football is like ninety-five percent <laughs> handball. It's like five percent football. Yeah, hey, I don't know what kind of football they use, man. It's an egg ball. Hey, hey, you guys ever watch rugby though? I think rugby in the American yeah, rugby, rugby is an amazing close, sport. Right? It's very similar, yeah. I don't like watching sport. For me, it's like, oh, is there a echo just for me? There's an echo from somebody. He's got it. Uh, but yeah, I don't like watching sport. I find it a bit boring. I like, I don't mind playing it, but just watching other people do it, it's like watching a game of chess <laughs> for me. It's just like right. It's frustrating. Yeah, I, I, I just I, don't I, have time for it. To be honest with you, I, I mean, I'm, you know. I remember as a kid when we played rugby at school, first time I ever encountered it, and I was told, yeah, you have to throw yourself at the other person's feet as they're running. I'm like, what? what kind of game is this? So, you know, <laughs> someone's boots are like this, that, 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 and you're supposed to run and, yeah, right, they're playing that. What kind of game is that? I, I did play some football in high school, though. Uh, I was running back, so cause I, I wasn't good at throwing or catching, but I could. I was fast, so, but wasn't good at it, so. What was what, what's the just calling me a ginger fraud? <laughs> oh my god! Look, this is natural weight, natural weight, and, and the kiss. <laughs> he's get, he's getting brave recently. He keeps getting uh. Much oh. All right, let me let me see. So we've only I think we've got a Muslim in the back chat. Why? <laughs> Okay, this stream is for non-Muslims, um, but I'm going to take a leave out of my brother's book that Yusuf just said to me, that I need to be kinder to Muslims who stumble into the stream, like, where, where am I, kind of thing. They see the Sheikh, and they see Asadullah, they see Khalil, they see Yusuf Ponders, and they all oh, want to say Salaam. So let's see. I, I'm going to allow this one, just to say Salaam. Yeah, bro, go on, quickly. I'm feeling generous. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. It's nice to talk to you. Actually, I'm uh, very far away from uh, from the Asia. And uh, actually, uh, I just came here to, you know, say salam and uh, uh, wanted to hear some atheist arg arguments. Because uh, although I'm not a very educated person, like I'm still studying, I'm, st I'm a student. But uh, I really uh, love to you know, think and, you know, uh, reinforce my beliefs, you know, through logic or uh, using rationality. But uh, yeah, so go on. Uh, sorry if I <laughs> came to the wrong place. As the brother was mentioning, that uh, non-Muslims should be here. So, anyways, thank you. Salam alaikum. Waalaikum salam. Trini's making digs at me now. I thought he said the uh, use of ponders is just a discount Google. <laughs> Okay, Amazon was Google. Google, it's a uh, mutual right. friend of ours. Ah, okay. Is, is, is this brother just going to hang around? Take care of guys. I'm about to say. Waiting here. for you to. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, can you guys hear me? Is it, is it working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Working? yeah, yeah, yeah. You can hear, yeah. You can hear you. All right. So we have got a guest now. Actually. This is the brother I was talking about. There's a guy from Australia called Tom. Nice guy. Um, Anti theist is how he identifies. Um, Hasn't heard any rational arguments for God. Um, some brothers put him on to us. So I said we'll go a little bit easy on him. Anyway, welcome, Tom. Good day. Tom. Silly Billy. Hello, silly Billy. Silly Billy. Silly Billy. Hey, Billy. I don't know if he realizes he's on. He's being a proper silly Billy now, isn't he? He's oh. coming on here, not, not, not got his 
Like so, it's, this is a comment. Uh, I don't read the comments. Like I don't like. I've had people say, "Hey, we put something in the comments." I, I, like I'm on the show. I'm not reading comments, by the way. This is a comment. But maybe you could comment to him privately and say you're on. Those devices are not connected. Ah. Okay. Mm. Cannot activate my camera. Uh, you don't need your camera if you, it doesn't matter. We don't mind. You you can come on without your camera. It's not a big deal. Just log out and log back in again. You should be fine. Right, let's see who we got. Anyone hiding in the chat? To be honest with you, this lineup is pretty tough, isn't it? Like you'd be thinking, you'd be, where, where oh, can I go? Kind. You know, Brother Khalil showing his guns. Honestly, honestly. <laughs> what are you saying about the Bible? He's, he's just lucky I'm not wearing a t-shirt. That's why I wear all this cover up out of modesty. You, you want to have a flex? I want to make you guys I was going to bring my thobe. I was going to bring my thobe, but I didn't do laundry, so. Shout out right. I'm wearing a I jumper wearing my t-shirt, but I did my laundry. This guy here, Matthew, he's a non-Muslim as well. Um, he's He's been in all my lives recently, just, you know, hanging around. And, um, but I think the reading is too rough. But Matthew, if you want to jump on with some questions, we don't mind. All right. Um, like I said, I'm feeling in a relaxed mood today. I don't, I don't feel like bashing up people too much. Silly Billy. Hello, can you hear me now? There he is. We can yes, hear you now. Get hey, hey, I apologize about that before. Um, it's okay. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate the opportunity to have a bit of a chat. Um, I've actually had a discussion with Yusuf um, a few months ago when he was just come, getting back from uh, COVID. And so, so this conversation, or at least this this idea, is a bit of an extension of. Where did uh, we talk? Uh, at Lighthouse Foundation, I think it's called Lighthouse. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Yeah. That. So, so Tom Morgan's yeah, yeah. my name, and uh, we had a, had a, a decent chat. At the time, yeah. I was having difficulties with uh, the concept that God uh, creates unbelievers and creates sinners. Uh, for for the hellfire, yet class calls himself merciful, you know. And to to me, that seems like a contradiction. And Tom, can I just stop you a second? Tom, yep. I'll just stop yep. you one second. You said you've had a conversation with Yusuf. Yeah, correct. And you've not heard a logical argument for God. We we didn't discuss logical arguments for God at that, that particular conversation oh, okay. was, okay. was purely out there, man. Uh, sorry, carry on, Tom. Carry on, Tom. That's okay. So, and it, my my issue is uh, sort of continued from that uh, from that conversation. So initially, it it seemed um, to me a contradiction that that uh, you would claim that you would claim that. Uh, you know, you've got a, a loving God that creates human beings, and by the Quran, the majority of human beings for the hellfire. Um, and from from there, I've had uh, continued thinking about it, um, and now I've sort of run into the issue of free will versus determinism, seeming to also raise another bit of a conflict or or, or contradiction. That it, it appears that if Allah wills everything um and if you're using the cosmological argument that everything in reality is uh, uh part of a causal chain that was set by allah and allah knew everything at, at, at that point then it's the whole concept of sin the concept of forgiveness is it doesn't really seem to make any sense like that so the foundation of that interpersonal uh abrahamic uh, God that will, you know, forgive you or send you to hell for sins. When, in actual fact, it looks as if, as if we don't really have free will. And my my personal viewpoint would be that no, we don't have free will. That 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 we just experience our our decision making. And it feels as if we're we're making decisions, but um, that we're just all part of a causal chain. Yet. Uh, Allah still sends us to hell and we can still experience that torture. So it makes it very difficult for me to rationalize. So can we take it one point at a time? Because I think we have two different issues here. And then 
even these two issues are kind of secondary to the main discussion of whether there is a creator or not. So the first issue that you were talking about, sinful people and them being created for the hellfire. So you have a mistaken idea right there to begin with, which I'll explain. Second issue of them. Qadr. Oh, okay. there you go. So, oh, oh, he's back. There you are. Silly Billy, you. Uh, <laughs> so secondly, the issue of Qadr or predestination, I think you also didn't understand the Islamic concept of it. So we'll explain those. And don't let me forget, guys, on the screen that we, we make sure that we clarify those. So inshallah, your mind will be clear. But one thing before we begin. So, um, Tom, if we explain that there is a creator, are you willing today to then accept and become a Muslim, like sincerely? Or are we just here to entertain? If if the burden of proof is met and that like, I won't have a choice, if, if you uh, if all of a sudden... Uh, Islam becomes the most rational explanation for reality, then you're forced to to accept it, you know? So, so this, is, this is a good segue into your other misconceptions. You're never forced. That's the thing. Some people realize the truth of Islam, but still don't accept it because Allah gave us a choice. And that choice is even outside. I don't know what time it is in Australia, but in here in San Diego, it's, it's daytime. You could go out see see the sun. It's obviously daytime. But you could go out and say, you know what, it's night. I don't accept that it's day, even though it clearly is, right? And that's the kind of thing you would be questioned for. And that's the kind of thing when people realize and deny, that's when they become yeah, people of the hellfire and so on. But so you I don't always have a choice. Could, could actually, you know, in reality, I couldn't walk outside and say, and, and it's nighttime, and then say, I can say it's day, but I couldn't believe it's day if my eyes and my senses are you know showing what? me that. Really not I'll tell you something. Uh, in the time of the Prophet sallallahu the and this is historically documented, we can discuss it. In the time of the Prophet sallam, the moon split, right? And people saw it, disbelievers who had asked for it, and they still denied it. And they said we saw it, right? So that's a different issue, right? But I'm just saying you have a choice. And if you are presented logical, clear, evidence-based proof, I just hope that you're going to then be open enough to then accept. Yes. Well, we're all here looking for truth. So if uh, right. if it appears to me that Islam is the truth, then I would accept it, that it's the truth. But yeah. You, okay. that so would let's be... take it back a step. Is there a creator or not? Because you said in your introduction email, you're an anti-theist. Correct. I'm not even sure what. What does that well, even mean? Like you are. Well, it means that actively the... against belief or something. I, I believe that holding beliefs that are not based on uh, observable, like on, that are not in line with your observations and the facts that are available to you is immoral. So if you're oh, yeah. holding a, yeah, a set of beliefs just because they make you feel good, I don't think that that's, that's moral. And I think that there are a bunch of elements of dogmatic religion that are quite bad for the future of humanity. There's, there are some elements that are obviously quite useful and, and people are good for them, but there are definitely, I believe, that there are parts of dogmatic religions that are bad for humanity. So in that sense, okay. I turned against it. So you're anti-theist. All right, I got you. All right. So my question, um, and everybody else jump in as you like, um, where do we come from? Well, we don't know that. And yes, there, there may be there may be a, a God. So like from my position, I'll say that so far that there is nothing that I see in reality that requires that there be a God, but well, that's not what know, I asked. Where did we come from? Well, well I'm, I didn't I'm ask you if there's a God or not. Yeah. Okay. Well, allow me to give me give my best. Um, I don't, when I, when I look at reality, as I said, I don't see the requirement for a God. I don't know that there, there was ever a beginning of reality. There may well have been uh, reality, you know, may have existed forever. There may never, never have been a creator. I'm not sure, but I don't, I, I don't believe that uh, religion necessarily has the answer either. So just to say, you it's, are, it's, Tom, bro, you're going way past. I just asked you a very simple question. Where do we come from? I didn't ask you whether God existed or reality existed or whether religion is needed or not. I didn't ask you any of that. I just asked you because we all as human beings do observe and we see life, right? You see people living, you see people dying, you see yeah. children being born. 
So, where did life origin f come from? I mean, this is a question. If you don't know, just say, I don't know. Oh, well, I, I believe that there's a physical explanation for the Go evolution for of I life. I want to hear it. I, I think, you know, I, 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 I look at uh, general abi abiogenesis, and it seems like all the properties okay. required for life to evolve, you know, we've, we've got uh, basic... Uh, Tom, uh, Tom. Abiogenesis yeah. just means origin of life. You're being asked what's the origin of life. Yeah. You just, you okay. just give well, a, di I you just give a, a different name for origin of life. Sure. So you, you I believe that chemical evolution or molecular evolution is, has been shown in principle and that the basic um, steps for molecular life to evolve, like in, uh, organic life from inorganics, uh, can be demonstrated chemically. That doesn't necessarily so your mean answer, that your answer then because, because I, I mean again I want to be I want to always be very clear. Your answer is that life evolved out of nothing. Well, the, it didn't evolve out of nothing. Um, the, okay. the laws of Where nature. Where did it evolve out of? Well, it, it evolved out of a non-organic reality that already existed, and the laws What's of. What's your proof you know, for that? Well, I think that it's been demonstrated. The pathways have been demonstrated. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I, I work in the mid device. I, I think, sorry, sorry, not, not, I, no, I think no. a more pertinent question we should ask Tom at this point is: What is his source of truth? What, what is his? What is his uh, criteria for evidence and proof? Do, do you understand? So, for example, he seems, from what I can see, he takes testimony as a, as a, uh, a level of proof for things. So, somebody tells him something that says, yeah, we evolved from this such a thing and that, and he accepts that testimony. So he does accept testimony as proof. Yeah, so sure. I, 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 I think what's more pertinent for Tom is to understand his rationale as to how he, dis how he discovers knowledge. Yeah, well, I would look at the information that is available to me, all information that's available to you, and then you just try and draw the most rational conclusions based on the information that you have. Whether that so, so then again, then you're drawing conclusions. You're not actually basing everything on observable fact. Because, uh, as somebody who works in the scientific industry, I can tell you that there is no clinical trial or any kind of controlled lab test that has proven that from inorganic, non-living matter, life would evolve without any intervention. There's none, right? So that is not a fact in science. It's not even something we can test in uh, a clinical trial. So that your, your, your idea that you're putting forward is not based on observable facts. Well, I, I don't necessarily agree that that's Okay, the case. so can you I, cite I, me I a clinical that, trial that has proved it? Well, I don't, there is no one particular uh, study that has shown that this is exactly there what There are happened. none. But there are many, many, uh, many, many different studies and many different points of evidence that all indicate the same thing. And there's no major... Nope. Uh, no, no, again, or, again, there's a difference between theory studies and observable <laughs> facts. Meaning, can you, in a controlled environment, show that from inorganic, no life having matter, life can evolve without intervention? No study has ever proven that. If you no, have you one, have, I'd love to also, see. It. But no, no study has also proven that that's impossible either. Right. So where again, we are again. So, so, so this is your I don't know if you work in the scientific yes. industry, but this is, again, a mistake. Studies are done to prove a hypothesis, not to disprove possibility. OK, yeah, so, sure. I'll, sure. I'll take understand, that. Understand. Do you understand? No, what, what, what what do, you, is, do you know science well? I mean, are you. Uh, everybody, look, uh, you know, I try to, <laughs> you know, okay, I try but do you to understand study. how clinical studies work. Right. I do. Yes. Now, OK, so. So your comment then makes no sense because you wouldn't do a clinical study so that something is impossible because how would you control and demonstrate that? Rather, what well, you, you do is you, you have a theory, a hypothesis. Okay. How about this? There are many, many different studies and different experiments that have shown that the pathways for molecular evolution are plausible and exist. We do not have the uh, t time or the, the money, I guess, to run... Uh, an experiment that would that would require a large, large amount. It would, it would be a, a massive Tom, experiment. Tom, to Tom who's the telling you this stuff? Tom, who's telling you let this me ask, stuff? Let me ask Tom one question before, though. Go on. We do know that there's clinical studies that have been done. You can go to nih.gov uh, and look at them, look them up. 
that there is a minimum gene concept, meaning even parasitic bacterium, single cell organisms need a minimum set of genes. Around 480 has been, has been documented in clinical studies without which they cannot function even at a parasite level, okay? So, so that means life, go ahead. I'll just say, look, I, I tend to have a little bit of faith, although this is not my area of A little bit of what? I, faith? Did you just say faith? <laughs> oh, bro. Faith in what? Drop the F word. <laughs> all, all of the information that I have, and this isn't exactly where I came to to uh, to, to, to discuss this particular uh, topic, although I do think it's interesting. But um, we like all of the information that I've had uh, that I've been uh, exposed to, all of the different studies. They all indicate that these pathways are plausible. We have not proven it. Uh, we have not Again, disproven. Hold on, it. hold on, hold on, Tom, 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 bro, you're 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 trying to exit. But we're on a freeway, so you're going to stay with me, all right? Can't exit. You've got loads of time, Tom. The don't worry. Minimum don't worry. gene concept. Do you know about it? I do not know about it, but when you're talking about, you know, ribosomes and self-replicating RNA, I'm not sure if that necessarily applies. Like, oh, it does. It does. I, like, like I said, and, and again, um, I would encourage for you to look this up after the show and all that. Um, we have tested in controlled environments that even at a parasite bacteria level, if you fall under a minimum set of genes, which again, the study that I had looked at had 480, you would not be able to function even at a single cell organism. And go to the well, NIH that, that that website. You, that may be in the case where you okay. have a, like a ribosome and a, uh, and a DNA strand. strand. Um, let me, but let I don't know if it necessarily applies. Tom, Tom, can I finish, please? Yeah, thank you. All right. So, so um, the way it works, right, is that we can test that when you fall below that, even in the most minute forms of life, they cannot function. They cannot replicate. They cannot grow. They cannot function. So it's called a minimum gene concept. Look it up. Really study it. Don't just Google it and try to, you know, really study it. And you will find that your theory that from inorganic dead matter, a living cell that can function develops is impossible because it had to have had a minimum set of genes for it to function. So who designed that minimum set of genes? Well, I'll, 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 I have not studied this, but I will go back and I'll say okay. I don't necessarily know that with self-replicating RNA, if that, that yeah. applies. Yeah, even I can understand any, that. any living cell, well, even a at a parasite a material a level, a ribosome is not a cell. It's a, just a molecule. Sure. So it's but a cell. It has to become a cell, right? I mean, it, no, how, for it no, to no, become a about, living matter. Is, how would no, a, no. a re self-replicating RNA develop into a human being or into a animal? That well, Those are all made up of cells, right? No, no, no. Ri ribosomes. People are not made up of cells? People are, but ribosomes okay. are um, what they call molecular life that, uh, that exists. It's not a cell. It's a, effectively a ribosome that can act as both a uh, storage, store information and as an enzyme sure. and can replicate itself. Is it, is it, have you seen it be alive, independent of cellular life in a clinical trial without origins well, from cellular life? This board, this borderlines between chemistry and life. Now we have what they call <laughs> molecular, molecular life, which is a molecule that can exist and it can replicate itself when in the in the right conditions when it has other uh you know sugars and things around it that it can work with and replicate itself so it's part of the rna world hypothesis but so again it's let not me, me let me just explain something to you because i think you're again trying to exit the rna or dna or any of that form that we check today it's we have taken it out of cell something that has a cell right cellular life so for you to think that RNA came before the cell, even if we were to give you that, it had to have developed into a cell for it to then develop into what we see as life today as humans and animals and so on. So that means at minimum, the first cell had to have had a 480 gene set. Who programmed that? I can, even if I accept that it has a minimum 480 gene set. It's not um, me. You can look it no, up. Can I, I mean, this is a non-Muslim study. Can I, can I, quickly uh, uh, silly Billy, sorry about that. If you guys don't, if you don't mind, Sheikh, if my, I'm here to Go for it, Fadal Habibi. Stop happening. We're talking about cell, we're talking about RNA, and 
we're missing some basics here. You talk about a cell, you're talking about cytoplasm, nucleus, and within the nucleus, you have a DNA, which has sequences of nit trinucleotide, guanine, cytosine, adenosine, etc. And then you have DNA, which goes through the process of transcription, would have an RNA, and you replace adenine by uracil. And then that transcription later on gives translation and eventually have protein synthesis. So you can't talk about RNA if we don't first talk about the nucleus or the cell and its origin. Where well, did this nucleus, where did this cell come from? The elements, well, the organic you. matter that you're talking about, whether it's um, carbon or whatever, the question should be asked is where they come from? You can, okay. you can appeal to the Big Bang Theory, any names you want. Some sort of explosion happened and started the universe. But the question is that explosion was explosion of what? Those elements, where did they come from? What okay, caused so now, the energy? That nucleus that broke down and caused that massive hydrogen bond breakage, like ma like major atomic bomb. Think about it this way. It broke the hydrogen. The question is, where did these elements come from? That's the question. If you can tell us where did they come from, we can have maybe like a nice start of discussion. Okay, so we're moving away from, from the genesis of life and now moving to uh, no? where, where did matter come from? Is that yeah, the genesis. It's the beginning. It is the genesis of life because we're it's taking it back. I mean, this, we're okay. on the same exact thing, but we're looking at, again, like Khalil beautifully explained, even if you're looking at RNs, you're going so back to a cell. That's where you develop. So the first yeah. cell and well, had to again, develop I with a minimum gene set, meaning that the first cell for it to have functioned, it already had to have had that. So where did the building blocks come and how did that develop? That's the question for you. Yeah. And just before you answer, Tom, I just want to I, I want to explain what we're doing here, because I know you wanted to come on and talk about God. How can you throw people in hellfire and all that kind of stuff? We don't mind that. But what we always sort of say is no disrespect. If you don't believe in a creator. There's no business talking about religion. All right. So we have to we have to do this. Um, and you make the claim you see no logical explanation for God. And what we're doing here, so for example, what the Sheikh is, is trying to demonstrate to you, that biology points to an intelligent agency behind the cell. Okay, chemistry points to an intelligent agency through carbon, the formation of carbon. And physics points to the existence of an intelligent agency through obviously the fine tuning of the universe, right? So you, you ask for some kind of rational kind of reasoning as to why we believe in a creator, yeah? And what we're demonstrating to you is biology, chemistry, physics, all point to an intelligent agency. So to get the biology, we need the chemistry. To get the chemistry, we need the physics. Yeah. So what Khalil's done, because he's in the medical field, and, and he's he, your doctor, isn't it? Is that right, Khalil? Yes. Mashallah. So he's hearing this thing about cells. And he's just thinking, look, you don't know what you're talking about. Okay, so let's take it back a little bit. Well, maybe, honest, maybe, I'm not you... talking about cells. I'm talking about molecular life that existed before cells existed. So we're not talking molecular. About what does the word molecule mean? So what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Forgive me, sorry. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. So are, are you saying the? I'm gonna have to use this phrase now. <laughs> are you talking about the magic custard? Well, yeah, I, I assume that that's that's what you're. That uh, yes, I assume. That yeah, that you, you know, this 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 compound carbon compound magic custard. Yeah, that's from it cells emerged and then they randomly mutated and harnessed by natural selection. Well, the mutation uh, began well before cells existed, according to the to the information of the random. Say that again, sorry. <laughs> the, the mutation existed mutation of well before. Uh, well, the mutation of uh, the molecules or the the, the well, trans. What do you mean before cell existed? What is a molecule without cell? So, so this is what I'm saying. I don't think you understand what a molecule and what a cell is. Yeah, I think you, you understand what are parts. I mean, you RNA the difference between is a, atom and molecule, uh, Billy. And a, a molecule is a group of atoms. Right. And what is a cell? A cell is a well. It's basically it's got a peptide outer layer or a fatty. It's just a, 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 a well. It has a it has a fatty outer outer layer, and then it's a plasm into, membrane. Nucleus yep. and nucleus yes. has DNA sequence, and that's where you have this process that you're talking about. The change of the position of the trinucleotide will determine the phenotype of the organism, like whether you're going to have blonde hair, black hair, whether you're going to look like this existed. and that. And this is what you're talking about. These changes have no, to come from no. the cell, so it's all no, part of the no. cellular. Uh, no, biology. I, I, I disagree with that. We can you can have molecular evolution. Uh, before a cell exists. So the current RNA world 
Uh, where, okay, where, fine. Where did it come from, though? <laughs> where, where do these things come from? Let, let, let's just define some points here, Tom. Sorry. Um, is a molecule made up of cells? No. Or is, or is a cell made up of molecules? I'm asking. A cell know. is made up of molecules. Yeah. Exactly. Right. A cell is made up of molecules. Exactly. But you can have a molecular evolution without a cell. Or what's, yeah, but what's, so what, what do you call that? I just call it molecular life. It's like the borderline between... Molecular what? Molecular life, you know? Okay, well, that's the, so that's the question. Where does life come from? Where did this the organism, whatever you want to call it, where did it come from? Well, I see it appears that it develops out of the laws of nature. The what does that mean? What does that mean? The laws of nature. Wow, what does that what mean? That? Well, what, what, my understanding of... I work in energy, right? So... Uh, the world, the, the expansion of the universe, uh, all the process of time, the arrow of time, everything is determined by an increase in entropy. That's how we know that we're moving forward in time, right? So energy moves from a highly dense state to a, a lower uh, state. That's the increase of entropy. Now, life is fantastic at increasing entropy. We, we uh, take in uh, energy, we take in food, and uh, we use it to create motion and we radiate out a hell of a lot of infrared energy and that's how you look for life on other planets okay. they look sorry for Billy, i apologize billy i'm sorry i'm very sorry to interrupt you i just wanted to say this look i understand you want to discuss the process of evolution which is basically just change over time yeah but what i'm trying to tell you here is change of what and what is the beginning of all this all i'm all we're asking is these elements these organisms these molecules that you're talking about we're asking you where do they come from what had exploded to cause this Big Bang theory? What what broke the uh, the bond, the hydrogen bonds? Whatever uh, organism were there, the question is, where did they come from? For example, let me well, ask you a question. Would you ever believe if I told you that this phone was always here on my desk? Would you ever accept that statement? No, I wouldn't accept that statement. Why? Because we understand what a phone is we understand how you make a phone that there is a product of human that humans build it so uh you know right for, so let's apply the same let's apply the same uh principle logical coherent principle to the cosmos uh why do you believe that something always existed there well i don't i don't believe that something always existed very good that, that means it has a beginning right it's a, Did it have a well, beginning? No, no, i don't i don't believe that it necessarily had a beginning it may or may not have had a beginning so we, I don't believe that we know. I don't well, believe where did it come from? Knows. I don't believe that we know, and I don't believe that anybody knows. Right. Well, where did it come from, though? Well, I, I, I don't know, and I don't think that anybody okay, knows. So, so I, I think that that's where you came to your what you should have just said in the beginning. You don't know. Well, we, we moved from talking about what I you asked me about where I think life comes from, and I think I've got a reasonable no, no. Uh, so, physical so once again. For that. What we want to make sure is when we're discussing, because the earlier you said you don't believe in what you cannot observe as researchable, testable facts, to faith in the theories. So those are two different things. So no, what no, I'm I, telling you, I said that I, I accept accept testimony. I accept that all okay, of the you accept that testimony. I have and, then, and then try and draw the Great. most rational conclusions. So now, taking it back to things that we can test in a a clinical trial or in a lab environment, we know a cell could not function even at its more primitive forms without a minimum set of genes. Who programmed the minimum set of genes for the first cell? It could not have just come by itself because it those genes would have to have existed before a cell existed. You understand? Yeah, and with, with the RNA, RNA world hypothesis, you just start with a very simple molecule that can self-replicate, and it all continues. Stop! 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 Hold Where on! Hold on! From? Hold on! Where did that come from? Because again, yes. we're talking about something you can test, observable facts. We can test that a cell cannot exist without minimum gene. We have clinical trials prove it. You can go look it up yourself. Now, when you give an answer, I want an answer that you can test. Where did it come from? Well, where everything came from, honestly, I just don't think we know, and I don't think that anybody knows. Okay, okay. So then, 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 that's a step that you don't know. Don't say nobody knows. Don't speak for others. Speak for yourself. Well, I'm so, speaking from my belief that nobody. I believe that nobody else knows. 
Okay, but then again, um, I mean, I believe I do know. So let's discuss that, right? That's why we're here. Um, now, if you don't know where life came from, can we at least say that there is intelligent design, right? That, like, like Khalil gave the example. So we have a cell phone. If I told you this cell phone came from nothing, pieces of dust over billions of years just evolved to make this cell phone with the cameras, with the unlocking mechanisms, with Siri, with whatever, whatever functions that are there, email apps, none of that was programmed by anybody over trillions of years, pieces of sand developed into the cell phone. Just be honest. Would you believe me? Well, to a degree, that's actually, it is You would true. believe me. Well, you to, would to believe degree, me that without silly, any intelligent silly. design, without any silly. intervention, this came by itself. You would well, believe me. I take a reductionist approach to reality. So I don't, I, I don't believe that our consciousness is anything magical or mystical. Uh, so in a sense, it, it is a physical, just a, a physical evolution of ideas that, that came through humans. And yes, humans uh, designed it and created it, but I don't believe that that's a metaphysical. Even by it came to humans. It came to humans. <laughs> let, let, let us have a look at this point. Give us some crisp analysis so far. Go ahead. So now. <laughs> Is it enough? Is it uh, enough? Yeah. He's I, intervening. I just um, want to kind of go back to something you said earlier about uh, it being immoral to believe things that aren't true. I believe that's what you said. And I agree with that. To, to believe things that you don't have any but evidence, evidence to, for. To okay. yeah. Well, let's assume, let's just take that as true. Let's take the whole evolutionary paradigm as true. Um, I think that's a good starting point. Mm. So here's my question. Um, evolutionary development is not teleological. It has no purpose behind it. Um, the only thing that it seems to be preoccupied with, and I use that term loosely because, again, we can only use teleological language, is survival and spreading of its own DNA to others, right? So it doesn't seem like it would be concerned too much with truth or logic or anything else of the sort, or your epistemology for that matter. What it, what it only cares about is uh, moving into the next generation. So whether or not those beliefs are true or not doesn't seem to really matter. So my question to you is, especially given the fact that theists have ruled the world ever since the beginning of human civilization, and that anti-theists and atheists in general have not, and have always been the minority in the evolutionary paradigm, how is it that you are trying to ground your understanding of morality and why is it that you value truth and logic when it doesn't seem to be working out for you too well? <laughs> well, I, I do take a utilitarian viewpoint of, of uh, morality, and so I do think that we have we we can say that there's there are things that are moral within a framework, you know. And um, when you take when you look at it from a utilitarian point of view, there are elements of religion that are highly that have utility, and that's why it exists. And uh, so, and there's also an element of, if you take the uh, more conspiracy, like a conspiracy theory type approach of that uh, religion is a great tool for controlling the masses and for social unity and things like that. So I would say that my, my take on it is that probably, yes, there is a utility for society. And I see things within religion, like community and even potentially the concept of God and the concepts of good and evil and the concepts of free will and personal reality, uh, personal responsibility that have utility, whether or not they're just illusions that don't exist, that, that only appear that way to us as we experience okay, reality. So time, if you don't mind me asking, thing. I just want to clarify before you go further. I apologize. I just want to make sure that I'm getting this correct. Would you count that your morality under a fr certain framework Given you know you, you think it has utility, do you also believe that it's an illusion itself? Because I mean, it doesn't seem like I mean, it's not really anything, right? It's just something that has kind of come up by society, correct? Sure. Okay, so at the same time, if you believe that my belief in God is the same thing, what's the problem? Yeah, because well, it 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 kind of sounds like you're sort of a moral nihilist that leans towards utilitarianism for pragmatic reasons, rather than that there is a genuine notion of good and evil 
Yeah, I, I don't believe that there, there is a genuine notion of good and evil. And uh, I, th I just think that, uh, yeah, I, I would be more of a, a utilitarian. So I'm sorry, Abdullah, I've actually forgotten your question. Oh, no, I said, if your morality is similarly illusionary, right, and, and it's just for the sake of utility, why is it that you are opposed to theism? Oh, because I, I, I think that I'm not opposed to all elements of theism, but things like... Where I got started getting interested uh, in religion is I grew up uh, learning that human IQ was increasing generation after generation. And then beca there becomes a, um, there's become a point where our IQ has started to, to level off. And in certain parts, even uh, certain parts of the world, IQ seems to be dropping. And unfortunately, um, reproduction rates and IQ are negatively correlated. So the more, more, the more kids that you have uh, at the moment, the uh, more generally p people that have lower IQ have more kids. Seems seems to be the, the the way that it's going, and for me that that poses a bit of a threat to reality, to, not to reality, to humanity. You know, we think moving forward, we. Want I was going to say then, well, how's it a threat to reality? Pun? A threat. To no, I was just saying it was uh, it was funny when you said reality. I was just. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, that's how I got got involved. I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, dumb people have more kids. I've got four kids, so I'm probably a pretty good example of that. But, but um, also, then you start looking at uh, things like uh, what what correlates with IQ, and you start looking at dogmatic religion seems to have a negative impact. Um, and so when I when I look I at that, uh, are these studies that you can cite? Dogmatic religion has a negative effect on IQ, or are you just making this yeah. up? Yeah, no, no. I, I, yeah, I, there are many, many studies that um, say the same thing. And, and are you? No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. Are these studies? Do they take consideration of which religion and um, there are other, some. other? Yeah. So I, well, I, I mean, is it about some of these? I mean, it, an essay. there's a number you of issues here. What was the statement you made about uh, IQ and religion? Well, there, there's a number of. It, let's let's assume that that's true. Still, I don't see how it kind of undermines the point. I mean, um, because well, well, from the the utility I mean, of having first off, first off, I mean, let me let me just be clear what I'm saying here. First off, um, evidence against that is that I'm sitting here, right? So I was gonna uh, say, I mean, I don't want to brag about IQ scores, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> kidding, <number laughs> if you want to go there, we that can go joke. there, bro. That's a joke. Number two, <laughs> number two, um, the the, the other. The no, seriously, I don't yeah. see how IQ is an issue, especially since we've sort of debunked this whole notion of IQ necessarily being tied to intelligence, various forms of intelligence. Right. But besides that point, the, the point that I made earlier, it's not just that there's some utility in religion. It just seems like civilizations cannot exist without it. Like there has absolutely yeah. never been an anti-theistic civilization that has ever existed, a, a non-theistic, something that doesn't believe in some sort of transcendent metaphysical force. It doesn't exist. It's never existed because, I mean, it doesn't Sucks. function. Nothing comes from that. I mean, atheists have contributed to civilization. I'm not saying they haven't, but what I am saying is they never build anything. They've never built As a one. society. Yeah. They've just they've, there's it's just never existed in human history. So why is evolution choosing to develop human beings who are believing in apparently this nonsense and low yes. IQs? But if for some reason the atheists are still in the background, you know, while while we're running the world, it doesn't make sense. Like that's it. Kind of leads to this sort of double-edged problem because either you say the evolution favors untruth in which case we ask well how do you know that your faculties in which you judge religion are reliable at all if it gives rise to success via this untruth or you say that it, it is driven by truth in which case you've got a problem trying to explain why religion was so successful well i don't think it's necessarily driven by truth or untruth and i think that there is utility in in the belief in god i see people get uh derive pleasure from it. I see, you know, community. Um, and there, there's a bunch of elements about religion that have great utility. Um, I can't really answer that question. No, no, yeah, but, but it, it is. You get, you get Abbas uh, or Asadullah's question, right? So it's not about just having utility. According to you, if evolution chooses that which is the best for furthering the species, and since the beginning of mankind in recorded history, we have not seen an atheist or anti-theist or agnostic 
civilization run a society, every one of them had had some kind of a higher power belief, then would you say that evolution favors such not, not as a society we, we could not function without it? Or we have not I seen don't know that. That, I don't know that we can say that we, we cannot function without it, but yeah, look, apparently there's I mean there's evidence wise we have not seen it, right? Yeah, there there are I mean, some the, the atheist ideas are not new. I'm sorry, have we lost him? They've been yeah, the yeah, yeah, after that, but they've uh, never run a society. Yeah, the, the other thing that's problematic too, Shekel's mind, is like as I mentioned earlier, is that it's not simply that there haven't been any atheistic civilizations. Is that your whole concept of morality is really also an illusion and based in your own utility, and yet you have uh, you have your opposition to something that likewise could be argued under your own worldview to be illusionary and and have utility. So I don't see how you value your position above ours. I don't. Well, I don't see it. So I, 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 the, the, I am, jump on, uh, doctor. Jump on. You, you want to see. You, we, with a through a utilitarian uh, viewpoint, you want to see humanity thrive, life thrive, right? Um, and so the reason that that I have have issue with it is again when we talk about trying to optimize for IQ, which would then theoretically optimize um, optimize uh, humanity and success. Um, then I see that hard dogmatic religion has a negative impact on that so we would want to optimize for that for the for the betterment of humanity you know but i'm not saying that there's no utility in in religion at all because clearly there is so there is a you know there are the elements of the atheist life that you know the 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 religious religious people have an advantage they have better community you know the act of worship and even believing in a god has psychological ramifications having a nihilist viewpoint like i i uh, believe in determinism and i don't believe that we have free will but still holding the idea that we have personal responsibility will result in better outcomes even though it might just be an illusion so i'm just trying to i i, I think we should put forward what will optimize humanity moving forward so i have two questions uh about the iq why do you believe that increase just before you go on just i have two questions so the first one would be how is it that optimizing iq will lead to better successful societies and what evidence is there to showcase that and number two would be with regard to um actually i forgot <laughs> no, no 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 oh no wait wait um was it that i don't want to get your what you said wrong um oh goodness i just slipped my mind I oh, thought you were thinking of that. Qu quickly, just oh. just a, a point, because, because again, you're kind of stating these studies as if they're facts. Uh, you're talking to a group of Muslims. Most of these studies that I have read have not judged on Islam. Rather, most of them have been conducted in Western countries where predominantly you're talking about Christian belief, right? So uh, if I were you, I would go back and check on that, because I have some... never seen a study. Hold on, let me finish. I mean, if there are some, can you post it or send it to me? Because everyone that I have seen the majority of the belief that they're looking at is in Christianity, not Islam. So, and IQ, again, is just one form of test. It, it does not necessarily correlate it into intelligence. Because if sure. you're going to go there, uh, I mean, if you want to share your uh, last IQ test and your score, and, and I'm more than willing to share mine if you want to go there, and I'm pretty sure uh, the panel here is going to outdo you. So uh, don't try to make this as if this kind of fact. So. Well, no, it's about distribution. It's not, you know, you, you can have well, exactly. Can have, so, so when you're looking at oh. when you're looking at at, at a at a a, <laughs> a, a a set number of people that are actual believers, for example, the majority of them being Christianity or Hinduism or something else, you cannot correlate that with all beliefs. There are some studies that break it down on uh, on a religion by religion basis, and plenty you, of them. Can you cite it? Can you give me a I can't, reference? I don't have it with me right now, but I could okay. I could look it up. Afterwards? Sure, yeah. Thank you. Well, the other thing that I, I just came up with the other question, sorry. So the other thing was that you said that you don't believe in free will and you're a determinist. And so I don't want to be too reductionist in my assumptions here because I understand that there is some nuance to that position. But just from what I understand in a simple manner, okay, if you lack free will and you're a determinist, um, what's the point of this conversation? <laughs> well, what's the point of anything? Yeah, look, <laughs> I, I do. Want, I understand that you know, 
And uh, even you could say, you know, what's the point of taking any free, uh, any personal responsibility? What's the point of trying in life? But you can also make that same statement if you take the Islamic point of view where um, Allah wills everything. It's like, well, if everything's willed and everything's written for me, why? Why try it? It's a, it's a okay, similar so just, just before you answer that, Sheikh, I can see you get ready to jump onto that. I just want to respond to what Asadullah said as well um, and respond to the comment section at the same time. Why are we having this conversation? Because some people in the comment section are saying, Tom, that you're not really listening. You know, it's not going in, right? What I would say to them is this is a position that a lot of people in the world are holding, what you've got. And maybe it may not go in with you. But there are people watching who this will resonate with and make them think and reflect and contemplate. So although we're addressing you, Tom, and we're hoping we can change your position. But if you're taking this position, the, um, everything's pointless kind of flex. And again, this is responding to the comment section. Just relax in the comment section. Don't worry. Tom is here. Yeah. we. You know, he's a nice guy. He's willing to have his mind changed. But even if his mind is he isn't changed... There are plenty of people who are watching who may be affected by what's being said here. So just have patience. Calm down in the conversation a little bit on Tom. It's a lot of information Tom's taking in. Um, anyway, now the Sheikh can jump all over his la latest. <laughs> claim. No, no. So I mean, there were a couple of points you made earlier, which I wanted to address. And this is one of them. So I'm glad you got to it. Uh, I don't want to take away from uh, Abdullah's train of thought. But just one comment first. If you believe this phone developed by itself, without any intelligent design, evolved by itself, without any uh, intervention from anybody using their own intelligence, I seriously doubt your IQ score. First. Well, I hope you understood what I actually was trying to say when I said that. Like, I was saying that human intelligence is a physical Thank you. Thing. So, so wait, so, so you do believe it took some form of intelligent design to design this phone, right? Well, the, the idea, if you take a fully materialistic viewpoint, then intelligence, you could say that that's... You're, you're, you're running from the question. To so, be honest, but, right? Yeah, look, 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 Tom, we're having a, just have a straight it. conversation. Don't hide behind concepts and things. Do you believe no, 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 no. this phone, without any intervention, developed by itself into its current form? Yes or no? No. Not thank you. Just oh, okay. 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 Look, 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 hold on. No, look, 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 look. Take it, take a minute, Tom. Take it easy. Good. You, 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 that's a good, honest answer. I appreciate the honesty. I appreciate the conversation. Now, I would say, and, and we have Dr. Khalil and we have Asadullah and Yusuf here, uh, who are more knowledgeable than me. They can correct me if I'm wrong. I would say the human body, as it stands, is more complicated, more complex, has greater functionality than this phone. Would you guys agree? 100 yeah. percent okay so tom i find it illogical that you believe that this phone cannot come by itself but the human came by itself that is against basic human logic well what, if we're taking the full materialistic uh viewpoint then look, i would just say, be straight no, no, I'm, I'm, in concept just be I'm straight not, look, I'm is the human body it. more complex or less than a phone it's more complex than a phone so would it not be logical then, since you didn't see this phone being made, you, this particular phone, wouldn't you say it's more logical for you to believe that the human had some kind of intelligent design that designed it than for you to believe a phone requires intelligent design? Wouldn't that be more logical? I do not believe so, no. And if you let me explain, I'll, I'll explain. So when I was saying that the phone evolved, right, um, then I believe that... Uh, Biology is just a physical process, and that ideas are also physical processes that exist in the mind. Right? Go ahead, man. I see you. So they're, they're physical things that, that actually exist. And that the information that took to uh, to build a phone, as obviously those ideas have, have evolved within humanity, you can, you can see these ideas developing over time. You know? So to a degree, you could say, if you're taking the viewpoint that it is all physical, that even that there is no no separation of body and mind or, or brain and mind, that it is all just part of the same physical process. So the evolution of, of biology, the evolution of technology, the evolution of ideas and society is just all an extension of the exact same physical process. 
So that, that's if you taken the, the materialistic thing. So I, didn't, I don't see that, no, that I don't see any requirement for a creator to, to draw a more logical conclusion, no. Khalil, go ahead. I see you. I don't even know where to begin, to be honest with you. I mean, there's so many things to cover here. Like, you, you wrote a great point, uh, Sheikh Uthman, which is this design, right? Let's not even talk about the joints, you know, your MCL, your ACL, and the, how you articulate joint. You can just talk about, for example, when you eat food, you know, what tells your stomach lining or cells there to produce hydrogen ions, acid, to break down the food? What mechanism? What, what designed? How do you detect there is food there for it to produce it? What, how, how does your body uh, detect glucose level and your beta cells from the pancreas produce insulin as a taxi driver to take it to the cell to go through the curb cycle? To produce ATP, I mean the compl the design is. I mean, in the medical community, we're still struggling to find the, like what caused this, what triggers this. What people say is that well, your body evolved. Well, here's the question: If your body evolved, that means the first man, the first person, didn't have those qualities. If they didn't have those qualities, they couldn't have survived. Could not make have survived. Us. So, this is like a scientific and a philosophical topic, and we can be here forever. But I really well, want to bring it back to just. One quick thing. You mentioned something about IQ and theology. I mean, Islam absolutely demolishes this idea because you look at the golden ages of Islam, which is triggered by the, the religion of Islam. Before that, people were like literally like living in like nothing, desert, just like burying their kids, daughters, etc. But you have this unbelievable revolution when you have Ibn Haytham who discovered and developed the scientific theory, which he tried to articulate, but not quite. And then you have, uh, for example, I'm looking at you know, the canon of medicine by Ibn Sina. I'm looking at Kitab Tasrif by Zahrawi, which if you Google today, you'll find that he is the father of modern surgery. The canon of medicine was used in Europe as the official medical textbook for 450 years. In order for you to become a physician in Europe, you had to go through the canon of medicine. It was the medical textbook. This is admitted and agreed upon by all scholars, all scientists, all doctors in, in, the, in the community, inside of the community. They give him credit. He's the father of modern medicine. Zahrawi is the father of modern surgery. Discovered over 300 tools that we still use today in the OR. The only difference is that you have a wire and you have a battery. So, and, and algorithm from Al-Khawarizmi, Al-Jibra, al, -Jibra, al -Jibra, so, that you have binary numbers that we have in this conversation today. Al-Jazari, the father I mean, of robotic. The uh, list is endless. And uh, these people, they started the book by Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. These people literally would have fathered the Quran first before they moved on to anything. So this idea of IQ and theology, absolutely, uh, with all due respect. I mean, it's not even worth to be dis discussing. I think we should just bring it back to what the Sheikh brought earlier, which is, look, where does this all day come from? If you can tell us where the first cell, molecule, whatever you want to call it, whatever elements the carbon, whatever it is, where did it come from? If you don't have an answer, you must agree, like you said, this phone can't just be here by itself, or anything can't be here by itself. You I don't think that that's logic something that we there, Right? And if you agree with the simple logic that things just don't happen but on their own, they must be placed by another intelligence, another entity. You don't have to call it God. I know atheists and uh, agnostics have this sensitive issue with the word God. And I believe this is Nature. the concept of God that was instilled by christian doctrine that there is this man with white beard up there god of wrath and this zeus thing it's not how god is in islam uh silly billy maybe you should ask us about what is god in islam let the sheikh probably give you an understanding of what is this concept of the first cause in the maybe we can have a better discussion than this back and forth to be honest with you about evolution and about these things this is my opinion well should we let tom move on well to his reservations agree. about islam because yeah. he made a i'll tell you what tom's claims are sorry tom i'm gonna have to expose you a little bit if you don't mind well i mean all right so I, that I only disagree with khalil on one thing go on. is that you mentioned beta cells right you mentioned beta cells yes in pancreas no 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 no. we don't have beta we have alpha cells okay all right that's a joke Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even. I don't have a good audience today. No, actually, no, I think he froze. I think he froze. No, okay. <laughs> no, <we> have, <laughs> that was really that time in freeze. Like oh, <laughs> tumbleweed. That, that was the best what face to insulin? freeze on as well. Just, Both hormones in the pancreas. But anyway, so okay. you, you looked so unamused, Khalil, and oh, you no, froze in face. I'm like, wait a second. Khalil's like, I'm a doctor. Come on, guys. So let's move Tom on a little bit because. Um, he, he's already said he's a hard determinist anyway. 
Anyway, <gasps> so this is his claim, um, and we'll, we'll let we'll let him move on to religion. Okay. I'm okay. I'm yet to encounter any logical argument that indicates that a God exists. We've, we've dealt with that. Um, or that any dogmatic religion is logically sound. I am open minded, but currently the amount of contradiction that can be found in religion and Islam seems utterly insurmountable. I'm very confident with my rationale and that observable reality is in conflict with the concept of Abrahamic personal, omnipotent, omnipresent God. And beyond that, that some Islamic teachings are self-contradictory. But I'm also open to changing my position when presented with new information. So I think now he should give us an education in Islam. Well, I mean, Tom, okay. just, uh, before you educate us, what have you studied from Islam? What have I studied from Islam? Yeah, I mean, like which university, which degree, Ijaza, Sanad, how's your Arabic? No, books, hadith? Yeah, no, no, no Arabic. So it's um, my, uh, you know, I. I've read the Quran. I've been looking cover to cover, top, cover to cover, but not wow. you know. I haven't I haven't sat down and studied each individual verse and taken it apart. So fairly superficial level of knowledge, you know. But those are um, pretty bold, bold claims for somebody with superficial knowledge, don't you think? Well, perhaps we you know maybe you can we we can we can find out. <laughs> cool, um, let's go for it. So my so, so, my issue. Go ahead. Okay, so where I think that the, the, the contradiction lies is where we started, saying that um, uh, we've got this, and this, the, the conversation I had with Yusuf was that you've got this God claiming to be the, the most merciful, yet he's creating um, people directly for the hellfire, and the vast majority of humans. Wait, wait, hold, hold on, hold on, yeah. that, that, that's incorrect. So you're saying that God created people and directly threw them in the hellfire? Not directly, not directly through the okay. hellfire. But he created them for the hellfire, and he says, "What, what do you mean he created them for the hellfire? Did Our they have a choice in their actions?" Uh, this is where the, this is where the issue comes in. Do they have a choice in their actions? If you've got a situation, are you where, asking a question or are you making a comment? But well, well, let me let me frame it. Well, there can't so be both. It's got to be one or the other, right? <laughs> a comment doesn't roll on a response. A question is when you're asking it, when you don't it, know. All right, it's a question. Okay, so we've got. Okay, good, good. So if you got, have a question, let me answer your question. Um, can I, can I ask the question then? Oh, I thought that was the question. No? <laughs> no, no. So the, the question, the question that I have is, we've got yeah. Allah willing everything into existence, right? He's written all, and he and he uh, he's written everything before creation. You know, so that obviously inclu includes uh, sin. It includes evil. He's the is the creator of everything. Yet we still have the concept of free will. Now, you know, and, and it, it, it's that that's the, the major contra contradiction that I think that we see is that. I got uh, you. What's, the, what's the contradiction? That well, that we've got uh, Allah willing everything, creating everything, and even the calamities within inside us uh, are being are being the will by Allah, and yet we're claiming that that we have free free will. And what do you mean by will? What do you mean by will? Uh, brought, in, I mean, brought into existence, I'd say. Brought into existence. Yeah, so I think this is where your confusion comes in, right? Yeah, this is why, why the Sheikh asked you, where have you studied? Because you seem to have this in-depth knowledge about what Islam teaches and the nature of creation and free will and all of these like things. That. Where where have you studied these things? Well, I, I've said that I have a relatively superficial we, we know that, we know that, we know that. But well, your well, claims are not superficial. You're actually telling us our religion. So I'm trying to understand who taught you this. Okay, well, you can tell me if I'm if I'm in. No, 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 you're teaching us. No, 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 I want to know. You're teaching us about our religion. You're telling us things that are, are facts in our religion. And I'm just trying to ascertain where you get the information from. Oh, as many sources as I possibly can. You know? So, like, so are they Muslim sources? Islamic sources? In, yeah, in some cases, yes. In some so, cases, so no. where, where have you got this idea of what of your concept of free will and everything being willed and all this kind of stuff? Where, where, where are you getting this from? Well, I've had some discussions with different imams. I've done some reading. I've watched a lot of YouTube. So, you know, that's probably where they come from. Okay. Because, you know, people like the Sheikh have studied the actual Islamic scriptures. That's a great opportunity for him to uh, to great. set straight. Great. School, school, school so, you is the word I would use. I just I, I just wanted use. to get the question first. Your question 
just so if I can paraphrase and understand, is how can uh, Allah have predetermined what's going to happen and then us still have free will to make choices and be held accountable? Is that your question? Yes. Okay, good, good. So it's very easy. And again, this is why I always suggest people to study like actually with scholars and things uh, because this, this is a very like an ABC issue in Islam. So Allah is the most knowledgeable, meaning his knowledge does not increase or decrease. But that does not mean that he forces his creation to do good and evil. Okay. This is where your disconnect happens because you're thinking from a very human perspective, meaning that if I, as a human being, will something on somebody, that means I force them. And that is the only way that I would know what they will do. That's the only way I would predetermine is by forcing them. But that is not the concept with our creator. Allah has knowledge of what will happen, what has happened, what is happening, what could have happened, what didn't happen. That is a perfect knowledge of Allah. He is the creator. He is, the, he is the one that made everything. He's above us in our intelligence and our knowledge. That does not mean, pay attention now, that does not mean you're like a robot that is carrying out certain orders because you were given choices in certain things. Okay, you're with me? Certain things you're not. For example, you were born, I'm assuming, in Australia. Um, you didn't have a choice in that. So Allah will not put you in heaven or hell or punish you for being born in Australia or America or Saudi or wherever else because you had no choice. Whatever color eyes you have, whatever color hair you have, whatever health issues you have, whether you can see or not see at birth, none of those are your choices. So you will not be held accountable for that. In fact, if you're lacking any facility, meaning if you don't have the ability to pray standing, then a lot of his mercy doesn't require that from you. And he forgives you and gives you the reward as if you did it that way. But then there are issues where you have a choice. You, Tom, silly Billy, have a choice to either submit your will to your creator, accept the evidences and follow what he has ordained, or you have a choice not to, even when you see it to be true. There, oh, you will be held accountable. Hold on, let me finish. There, you will be held accountable. Now, Allah knows before what's going to happen, but that is the knowledge of Allah. That doesn't mean He forces it. That doesn't mean that He makes you. This is the disconnect out of the human limited thought process that we have. Allah knows everything, but He doesn't force it. You will be held accountable for your choices that you had the free will to choose. So can I do anything different to what Allah has written on his tablet? Again, so this is where you're, you're misunderstanding again. What Allah had written is from the knowledge of Allah. There is nothing new to the knowledge of Allah. That is so the I can't, knowledge I can't, of Allah. I, can't, I on, physically me, cannot me, do anything me, different to what he has finish. written on. Let me finish again because you're confusing force and foresight okay i'll give you a very human concept just because i want to open your mind okay i'm a father you have four kids you said so you're a father sometimes your child is playing somewhere doing something and because of the limited amount of knowledge we have as parents we know what's going to happen we know playing on the edge they're going to fall we know they're going to start fighting with each other not that you force them but from your limited knowledge, you know that's going to happen. So you tell them, hey, I know this is going to happen. Stop. Right. And even though they make the choice to continue playing or not, what you thought would happen happens because of your knowledge. Now, that's a very limited concept to us as humans. But you didn't force your child. Right. I would say that's a, uh, not, not happen. I, would, I don't believe that that's a good analogy at all. Because it I'm is, not, if you, no, if you pay attention not, to it. But I'm not the creator, even though I've, I've had exactly. a child. Exactly. That's not the point. The, That's I'm not the, the point creator. that you are not the creator, but because you have a little bit of more experience and knowledge than the child, you know what's go what that's going to end up in that situation because of your limited knowledge. Now, when you take the creator, that's a whole different level. It is a whole different level. You so let's talk compare about the knowledge of Allah. You're not paying attention to the analogy. See, yeah, you just want I think, to uh, I think uh, silly Billy, maybe like you just listen to what the Sheikh is saying. He's investing and putting time to try and explain to you. And Sheikh, after you, if you don't mind, I want to just add something on what you said. Similar. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I'm good. Look, look, the example is very clear. Anybody with an open mind and open heart that wants to accept, it, it's very clear. Look, 
I'm giving you a very limited human example for a great concept, but Allah put these imthal, these examples for us to see. As a parent, you know sometimes what's going to happen with your child because of your knowledge and experience, even though you are not all powerful like Allah. Right? But you know, you can. I can tell you that if my son goes to this place with this person, it's going to be a fight. Right? I can just tell you from experience and knowledge and so on. Now, didn't force him, but he will make those choices. But I know because of my knowledge, right? This is a very human example. But now imagine the creator. He knows everything, but he doesn't force it. You have a choice. You have a choice to pray or not pray. You have a choice to fast or not fast. That is the greatness of Allah that he knows what will happen. But it does not mean that he forces it on you. Okay. Now, can, uh, ahead, my, my response okay, to that, point. just, okay, so Bill, I just want to add the similar point, right? Think about a classroom, right? And there is a professor there, right? A professor has been doing this for 20, 30 years, right? PhD in the field. He's had tons of classes, graduates. He knows exactly the quality of the students. He's been with his students for about eight months. He just knows that this person is an A student. This person, no matter what, is not going to pass C. They're not, they're not C plus. They just don't know the subject matter. But he's not influenced you. Now, this is and this is the point. This is the point, uh, silly Billy. You, as a student, well, for example, I'm a student. You're the teacher, right? You are not, you're telling me to study. You're giving me, think about it like God sending prophets and all, right, messengers? But what you're doing, you're telling me, look, you need to study, right? The uh, finals are coming up. Now, it's up to me what I'm going to do. I can either play video games or I can study for the test. But because you know me for a while, right, for eight months, and you've had typical similar type of personalities and students, you know, you get an idea, you could bring your specificity and specificity of the test will be like about 98%. You're pretty sure this many people are going to pass. This kid's definitely getting an A. I, know, I just know this kid is an A. Why? Because their ethics are... I'm not affecting him. Everyone, the whole class is getting the same message from me. Guys, study for your final. Guys, study for your final. But I'm observing as a professor and seeing these people, they put in the work. These people just have higher IQ, whatever. You want. So the fact that the professor is predicting and getting a high specificity and sensitivity of his prediction, that doesn't mean he's altering the experiment. You have full choice to go either play video games or to study. But because of my experience as a professor right, and wisdom, 30 years in the field, I'm able to make that prediction. And this is why experts even do a stock market and other things. They're not affecting well, the market, but they give in intellectual. No, this is the point. Now, apply this to whom we call the most wise, all knowledgeable. So it's a very simple thing. Don't confuse things. It's like two different things. A matrix, one thing outside time and space, observing the experiment. That's it. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Okay. Well, no, I, I think that that's both examples are logically flawed, to be honest. I think that's the um, flaw. What's the flaw? I know, I know. Well, what I know what he's, well, the, know floor, where he's coming from. The, the floor is that uh, the teacher is not the creator. The yeah. teacher has not the, the test. So, you, you know, we, we take a look at, uh, say, that. Uh, <laughs> I, I the think the teacher test. did write the test, right? <laughs> uh, well, the, the he teacher teaches the class. He, he's in he, control he, of the classroom. Yes, but he didn't yeah. create the students and he doesn't know every single thought. Oh, the, well, I can't give another example because we don't have another example of identity well, I, creating things. But that was no, the exact it, it point. That these are this these is... are human examples of okay. concepts. Now you have to take it up to a creator level. But you, and when do you understand do that, what logical. Khalil is saying, right? Well, do you understand I, I, I the understand concept or saying. no? But I, I understand what he's saying. But I, I feel that it's completely illogical when you take a uh, look at God as all knowing, all powerful, mm -hmm. right? Um, he is not the teacher. He is the creator. So yeah, we know that. Exactly. Yeah, we so he's, essentially, he's created this test, right, which is redundant because he knows the result of the test. So no, 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 one second, 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 and through his knowledge and experience, the limited human knowledge and experience knows the student's going to fail. Is it redundant for him to give the test to the student? With, with Thank it, you. Uh, no, no, I don't believe it's redundant for him to give the test to the student. But exactly. he's not God. He's not God. He's so, not. Right. That's not the, the point. <laughs> that's the whole point. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Billy, silly Billy. That is the whole point because we don't have gods like Zeus and uh, I don't know what. And if you look, see, this is Zeus and this is... 
another god. This is Thor. This is uh, we believe it is only one god, one founder, one initiator, right? So since there is no other entity like him, his majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're giving you a ridiculous human-like example, like it's called an analogy. Now use your intellect, an IQ, which you claimed, to try to arrive to apply the same principle to someone who has unlimited knowledge. So knowledge allow me to do this then. If if I what if I you're asking be, me, oh, just one second, so think about this. You're asking me, you're saying the teacher is not God. So you're saying to me, you have to give me another God. Well, I can't, because there's only one God. No, no, no. Oh, 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 before before you go into reification mode, silly Billy, do you understand what Khalil and my example demonstrated? Do you understand that the teacher knows the outcome? To a certain, I mean, certainty due to experience and knowledge, even though it's limited, without forcing the outcome. Do you understand do. that concept? I do. Okay. But where so I now think just that take that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Take a take a deep breath, relax. We're, you know, so you do understand that that concept exists, where you can know what will happen without forcing it. Yes, I understand that. Okay, now take that to a greater level right meaning allah knows what will happen but allah does not force it upon you that's it well, this, this your, your is where I, I is actually feel, no no done. i don't think so this is where i think that the analogy falls apart when you take it to the higher level so uh, what i think a better analogy because i have uh, heard this this response to this problem before and um what i think possibly a better analogy would be rather than a teacher and students would be rather a creator somebody who creates Robots, right? Well, I, I, I create robots. That's not <laughs> that that somebody, is not a good analogy. I, I create robots. Again, right? if you asked us for analogies, then let's let deal with our analogy. Don't give us an analogy. Why, why did us. you ask us? Thank you. Yeah. I mean, well, keep I, your analogy to yourself. If you ask us to explain a concept, because you, you've been through that analogy, that's why you want to take it there. But we're not going to let you because that's not something we presented. If you're asking our well, analogy you know, for an Islamic concept, then deal with what we presented. Chair, Don't deal I with somebody else. Your else. analogy does not make sense. Do you mind? Do you, I go think ahead, if we let him or, make ahead, yes, the sir. analogy, um, I, th I think we can make a good point with it, to be honest, because it's usually this very example that I bring up to say why um, we, th there is a problem with the way people think about this whole free will determinism thing um, is that they, they try to make a comparison between how God creates with how a human creates. And so when they're looking at the whole free will versus determinism thing, they're, they're looking at it like if we were to create a robot and make the robot do something, that that is the same way that Allah creates. And that's not how Allah creates at all. Like We're, we're creating something out of already existing things and we then produce mechanisms that we can understand to a certain degree. Um, and so you can see in that and, that, and then as well, the robot itself has no sense of consciousness. Uh, it has no will. Um, it, and it has no, obviously, you're someone who doesn't necessarily even think that we have will at all. Um, but under the assumption that will does exist, uh, the, the robot doesn't have that. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he does exist, he's the greatest example of a being with will. He's an independent being. There is nothing acting upon him. Whenever he does something, he's doing it of his own accord. And when he creates, it's not like we create. His, his way of creating isn't the same way as the way we would build a robot and make it do something. No, Allah it tells us in the Quran that he, um, he does not wrong us, but we wrong ourselves. So the, the, the Islamic narrative, which you're saying here is the contradiction, the Islamic narrative is quite clear. That Allah does create us with the ability to make a choice because obviously we're going through an internal critique here, and the the scripture does put this forward that it is us that are responsible for the things that we do. If I do a bad thing, I am worthy to be reprimanded for that. If I do a good thing, then you know it, I'm worthy of being thanked for that kind of thing. There's a it's a hadith sheikh or a, a verse from the Quran that says, sure. um, "Those who are not thankful to the people are not thankful to Allah." So it's, you know, there's yeah. yeah. So there's a notion that people are responsible for the things that they do, and the way Allah creates is not like the way a human creates a robot. It's not out of already existing matter that you've got to configure in a certain way, and then you force it to do a particular thing. No, Allah creates us with a will, and for you to say that Allah is forcing us, you would have to explain what this will is, 
and explain how that mechanism itself is equivalent to the way that a human being would create a robot, for example. Well, I'm saying that you don't know that it is equivalent to the way that a human, and I would say it necessarily, if they do exist, if Allah does exist, and he does create the way he creates, that it would necessarily not be the way, a, similar to how a human creates a robot. Oh yeah, I, I would agree that, you know, that the creation would be slightly different, but I still believe that the concept's the same. Like if, I, if you take a, a deterministic uh, viewpoint, then, our will and our thoughts are just parts of the physical process that Allah knew before creation, right? So you're asking me to choose a deterministic viewpoint. I'm sorry. For a moment. Yeah, see, again, you, you, you're putting your viewpoint on us now. That's, that's Our viewpoint, saying. we clarified already, right? Which is that Allah knows but does not force it upon you. You have What's a choice. The, no, we don't. Well, we don't really. It's the, it's you even do, really even, even, again. Even under, this is why under, this is why the robot analogy is not something we put forward here. Khalil's example, my example, again showed the child or the student has choice. No, but I, I don't. But I don't, somebody I don't. with knowledge and experience knows what they will do, and that's a limited human example. Obviously, amazing. Great example yeah. of the great creator. Can, can, I, can I avoid analogies? Can I just deal with the, the, the elephant in the room? Go for it. Yeah. Tom, Yo. so you, I'm trying to understand this contradiction of Allah being merciful and at the same time punishing someone when, yeah. So the question is, how does Allah know if somebody's going to go to the hellfire? Are you asking me that? I don't know. Did you well, yeah, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. He wrote it, his, his magic pen wrote it on the tablet. No, his Before magic pen wrote what on the tablet? Everything. No, yeah, but what though? I've got no idea. Well, so, <laughs> so this is this is the problem. Magic pen. This, this wow. is why I've never had a problem with this issue. And I, I, it, it, it puzzles me when people come, oh, how, how can Allah be all knowing? And then, uh, you know, like for example, why can't you do something different to what Allah knows you're going to do? Why can't yeah. you do something different? Well, I don't know. Maybe you can add because to, to me that still that seems like if we go back to the robot analogy that effectively no. we've passed everything out. Forget the, forget the bloody analogy. Deal with the elephant <laughs> in the room. Why can't you do something different to what Allah knows you're going to do? Because we don't. Because I don't have free will. <laughs> no, because that's what you're going to do. Which I think Allah, we don't, we don't Allah, 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 knows, Allah, knows, Allah knows it. So Allah's knowledge is your actions. So whatever choices you make, Allah knows whatever choice you're going to make. If you're going to go left, you're going to go right. Allah knows you go left. So are okay. you saying that free will is the ability to have done otherwise? Basically. He thinks knowing the, knowing the outcome of somebody's actions means you've determined that action. And I just do not get that logically. Yeah, can you can going to do something. Can you respond to Hamza, please? Yeah, please um, do. Yeah. Yeah. So just the knowledge... It's by itself does not determine that free will cannot exist. But right. if you know, if I roll, just so if I'm, I'm going to take the position of God for a se for a second, and I'm rolling a a ball down an intricate set of pipes, and I know that at the bottom of that those pipes there's uh, somebody's car and the, this rock's going to fall out and it's going to hit the car. Now I roll it down the pipe. My view of consciousness is basically. Yes, we've got these different pipes with different forks, but essentially it's a physical process that just works its way down. Now, I know that which which pipe is going to come out at the end. I know it's going to hit that person's oh, car, oh. but I'm claiming that the ball itself ha ha is the one that's responsible for hitting oh, the car. Oh. Yeah, yeah, but the right. pods don't have, uh, don't have consciousness. What's the analogy? Exactly. They don't have you. consciousness. You can't use elements that don't have What's consciousness. That? What's that, Khalil? I'm going to use them. I don't believe... What's that, Khalil? Tom, Tom, God created you. Yes? He's seen your life. He knows what you're going to do. He knows if you're going to die a Muslim or not, yeah? Yeah. All right. Do you Are you the one who will decide whether you're a Muslim or not? I don't believe so, no. You don't believe so? Why not? Well, in order for me to become a Muslim, it must make sense. It must be rational, right? Forget that. It's I didn't say that, did I? I'm not asking no, you not if you believe Islam is true. I'm saying when you die... It might take you 20 years to come to the truth. Who knows? Or you might never come to the truth. Who knows? The right. point and, is okay, this. Exactly. Let, let's establish one thing. Let's establish one thing. 
you're either going to die as a non-Muslim or as a Muslim. Do you accept that? Sure. Right. And does Allah know whether you're going to die as a Muslim or a non-Muslim? Yes. Right. And if you live your life rejecting Islam and die as a non-Muslim, and Allah knows that, did you have free will? I don't believe that that logically follows, no. Why? Why not? Why not? Well, I can't choose this is to your become problem. A because again, I mean, you, you, you can't choose. What about, what about calling the show? Did you call the show? Who, who, who chose to call the show? Khalil, sorry. I, I think we have to let Tom go here at this point. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Hold on. Because no, you're speaker. not demonstrating no, any part man. of this whole process, Tom. You've showed no logic. And now you're trying to make claims that are logical, illogical. I'm really saddened by it. This level I, of arrogance of so all of a sudden that you, 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 you've you gone from a don't know and everything's this. And all of a sudden, when people are presenting alternate views to you, right? Whether you die as a Muslim is up to you, mate. Whether you choose to accept that Islam no. or no, not. This is actually a good point. Can I, can, I, can I make a good point here, right? And so this is actually where my thinking uh, about Islam really kicked off. That's right. That, um, okay, well, we've got people, I, I think about my... My grandparents, non-Muslims, lovely people, died non-Muslims, right? They're in hell, according to you guys. So, um, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not okay, well, necessarily. I'll, I'll not, that. Not, just one second, uh, silly. Let's one step out of time. So, we're not Christians. We don't believe that if you don't believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins and you baptized, you end up in hell. We don't believe that. We don't believe that you're doomed to hell. That the gates of heaven are closed because you carry the original sin. We don't believe that stuff. No, I, I misspoke. You, you are right. I apologize about that. Yeah, so but, we believe that. We believe Allah is just and will treat you based on no, the elements. Khalil, and the Khalil, we believe Allah is the most merciful. The most merciful <laughs> irony. Yeah, so... Can we let Asadullah speak? I, I know he's been patient, mashallah. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so... Um, I think some of the stuff was already kind of stated, but I kind of want to go over what I think the main issue is. Yeah, I see that the the difference here you're trying to make is that because Allah or God creates something, therefore, and knows what the person's going to do, therefore, they didn't really have a choice in what they did, right? Because he before creating them, he knew their outcomes. So to you, it's as though he created them in that fashion to produce those outcomes. Right, so well, he, he could have changed it if he wanted to, obviously. Could have changed, yeah, sure. Um, he could have done a lot of different things, right? Yeah. So, this whole thing about like robots, too, I think it's interesting. And before I give you kind of like my explanation, I just want to say that I don't believe in absolute free will either. I mean, I don't, I believe that there's free will, but I don't believe that, like, for example, I don't believe like I can just flap my, my arms and fly because right, there are limitations, right. There are certain choices that I can only make within my given circumstance, within my within my own abilities, right? So there is a lot of constraints to choice, but without constraints, there really isn't any choice, to be frank. I know that sounds kind of odd, but because, I mean, to, to some degree, there have to be constraints for us to even define what choice is, right? So like, for example, just to give you a quick analogy, um, let's say I go to the, the ice cream shop and um, I don't know in the very moment like what flavor i want and then i decide that i want uh, butter pecan because i had um chocolate a week ago and i just want something different right so and let's say i got to the ice cream shop at 5 p.m i was a little late and i was gonna get there i wanted to get there at 4 45 but you know there was traffic and stuff right so there's some constraints there and some influences behind my choice but um i'm still making a choice within those constraints and with or without a God, that that um, that situation would have never changed. So what I'm trying to say is this, like even in the concept of robots, I thought it was interesting that everyone brought up robots. But with machine learning, for example, you can program something to an extent where, where it only it chooses things to be based on its circumstance, based where you put it. Right. It's not necessarily forced, per se. It's it's it depends on what context you put the machine learning in. Right, that it makes certain decisions. So, like I said, I, I have a more nuanced uh, perception here of, of free will, and I do believe there are some constraints, but I do think it's a non sequitur when you say because God created something and knows what they're going to do, that therefore they were forced to do it. I don't think there's a connection there. And Hamza, I think, pointed out very clearly the reason that God knows is because the choice was made. 
Whereas it's not, he doesn't know because he told the guy, or he's like, okay, you're going to do this. Like, you know, this is what's going to happen, you know? No, he did, he knew, he knows the future, right? And when you right. know, the, like, for example, let, let's take out the whole creator thing. You think a creator thing is essential. I don't think it is. If I knew the future, it doesn't mean I forced somebody. Even if I created that person and I still know the future. See, there's, I don't think there's a connection here between creating and not creating. Another example, and this is somewhat similar to what they said. Let's say I read somebody's text message on their cell phone. They said, I'm going to the grocery store at 2 p.m. And I call them and they're at the grocery store at 2 p.m. And I knew they were going there because of what I read. I didn't force them to do it. Now you can say, well, you didn't create that person. Who cares? If, okay, let's say I did create that person. Stop it all. I'm just saying this for a thought process, right? And I knew that they were going to the grocery store at 2 p.m. I didn't force them to go to the grocery store at 2 p.m. I, it doesn't matter. I just knew they were going to do that. It's the same thing as me reading the text message. It really is. There is no difference between whether I bring them into existence or not. Well, <laughs> there, there are some different schools of thought, you know, and you've got um, one of the issues that I, I take and I, where yeah, I think schools uh, of thought and what? Yeah, this with is what to free, free will and, and theology. No, 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 no. We're talking about Islam here. We're not talking about other uh, schools of thoughts and now, free will. Uh, so don't yes, bring uh, anybody else. We're talking about Islam, the Islamic are... concept. We've all clarified to you, so stay within that framework. Apparently, no, there no, are no, different no. Uh, uh, schools of thought within as Islamic theology as well. So, so I hear. Which like school are you talking about? Jabiriya, Qadiriya, Mu'tazila. Well, one second, what's Sheikh. One second, Sheikh. Don't give him the information. He hasn't studied, apparently. Oh. Now, all of a sudden, he's teaching us again. So well, tell us. Okay. What if there are, what if there are different sects? What if there are different schools of thought? Uh, Silly Billy. Can you name the school of thought? So just so I no, can understand. I would, I would not be able to. I would not be able to. Okay, so but then I, don't I, bring I, them into it. If you don't even know the name, don't bring them into it. We told you what the Islamic belief is. You asked us. We are the ones that are Muslim. These books are not a green screen. It does. So <laughs> these are where we study. So now you know the Islamic th school of thought. Leave it at that. Discuss it there. Don't try to jump out now. Okay. Asadullah made a great point, and I'm going to ask you, Dom, be honest. That's the only thing I ask you is honesty, right? Let's say, for example, I make you a time machine, right? And you go back to the future. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So you go to the future, and you see Khalil is now the head surgeon for a big, you know, hospital, and he has 18 kids, and uh, <laughs> careful before you make that, and he has oh, four wives, right? Oh, I now, was going to say that before. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding, Khalil's wife. If you are married, sorry, I'm just joking. No, alpha right? cell. No, no. <laughs> He's now alpha. the question is: You come back, you know, because you went on a time machine, right? You know that's what's going to happen for sure. There's only one timeline, right? Are you forcing Khalil? If if I have well, if we're talking about responsibility, right? Then if I have free knowledge of uh, of what happens, and I take no action to uh to change change things then i have will have some responsibility in in that action what yeah. how, how you are so responsible you for if you change things things and you're reflecting free will <laughs> you, you... i'll be right back oh, so yeah. you, you know if i if you're if i go to the future tom, and i see the news come report, on now, tom listen, come on if, come if, on, you, honestly, if you change things the then you're you're controlling people's free will no, you, no, I didn't say controlling free will, but having some responsibility. And this is the issue. No, you said you change things. No, no, you no, no. change these Tom, things. Tom, 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 Tom. Just because you know that Khalil is going to become the head surgeon for a big, uh, you know, hospital, does not mean that you made him. Does no. not mean that you're responsible for that. No, no. But it, look, this, uh, this is, this my, is my issue is with Tom. Come my on. issue is with on, sin, or not not with reward. So he, he does his own sure. thing. He, he does okay. Well. So, if so I let's say you he, let's say you go into the future. And again, I'm just going to give an example here. I mean, please, nobody get offended. Khalil, I'm sorry, I'm going to use you, yeah. right? Let's say you go into the future and you see Khalil's got a big tattoo on his back that I love Sheikh Osman, right? So yeah. don't get any ideas, all right? It's a joke, right? Let's say you, you do that. You, wait, 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 wait. You mean this one? Hey, 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 don't show it, don't show it. Just keep it between us, all right? Right? So you go in the future and you see that he's got a big tattoo that says I love Sheikh Osman. You come back now. You know for sure he's gonna get it, no matter what. You, he's already. It's his decision. He made it. Are you responsible for that decision? Now, if he's just say he's gonna regret this this decision, right? And no, look, I know. Not, well, not, that, again, well, that's not you, your. You, that's not you, your you, job. Your me, job is not question. to influence. Look, listen again. Once again, this is where your 
mindset shows your limited human thought, right? This is where I, your IQ level comes into play because now what you're trying to do is influence his decision. But that's not what you're supposed to do. He knows right from wrong. He knows tattoos are haram. That's his job to make that decision. We're Just because you know right? about it does not mean you forced it. The concept sure. is clear. The but examples not... you gave, the problem with them, whether it's the ball rolling or whether it's the robot, is all things without free thought, without a conscience, without decision making. The examples we gave but you... Your three... decisions are based on your past experience. They're, they're based on everything. Tom, Tom, okay. Tom, at this juncture, I'm going to let you go. Radio. I, I just don't think we're getting getting the point. The Look, point no, no, is, no, no. I just want to ask no, no, no. you one question before. I don't before think you're getting the go, point. Tom, Tom we, we've discussed these. We've given you examples as clear as day. It's okay. You can think about it. Ponder the minimum gene concept. Go look it up. Uh, you know, how RNA, RNA and, and cell your body works. Go look it up when you go home. No problem. Or when you to get time. One question for you. Just one question out of my curiosity, if you don't mind. Um, if we, you, you do accept testimony, as you said earlier. If we show that there is clear testimony that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, split the moon, right? Just, and this is a curiosity question from my side, right? We can give you eyewitness accounts from enemies, from all, all of that documented, rigorously checked. And, you know, it was at a, a, a physically impossible task done and documented. Would you believe that it had some kind of supernatural force behind it? I'll, if there was enough ev evidence to present that it, it actually happened, then you'd... Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So if we had eyewitness accounts from the supporters of the Prophet, peace be upon him, the enemies of the Prophet, peace be upon him, from different cities within Arabia, if we had historical documentation from other lands, pretty strong evidence, right? I've, I've seen some I'd, I'd have to review it to... to, to okay, I'll tell you what. Go, go, let, me, let me just leave you with this and then I'm if, done with this, right? Go to the One Message Foundation channel or you can just Google Sheikh Uthman uh, Moon Split uh, and, and look up the video. I present the evidences and inshallah when you're ready to you take your shahada, call the show back and we'll do the shahada. I'll, I'll take a look at it. Thank you. But if I can just... Do, right, Tom? If I can make one one more statement before, uh, before we round up. And this is just, again... This, working on the, the free will issue. I know it's frustrating, but we, I really do feel like we're just butting heads because you, you, you've taken the point that we have uh, ability to choose. And I still don't feel that those analogies actually Tom, work. Tom, Tom, sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. No, we presented you the Islamic position. We demonstrated how knowledge of the future doesn't mean you've determined that future. That's it. You, you can't bring your hard determinism and force it on us. You want to deal with your paradigm of hard determinism? Deal with your determinism. But don't judge what we believe as Muslims on your hard determinism. Yeah? Okay. Whether, you, whether you get it or not. If you can show no, any no, no. Whether you get it. One second, Tom. Whether you get it or not is, is another thing. But to say Allah being merciful and yet allowing people to go to hellfire, knowing what they're going to do in their lives is somehow contradictory is utter nonsense. Utter nonsense, yeah. yeah. And well, how is that mercy? What let, do you let mean? Me, let me just what, how, what how, me how, you look. If he's Allah created, created you, you look, look, okay. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just remember one thing, Tom. We don't say Allah's all merciful. Yeah, we're not going to say he's allowing pedophiles and how murderers and rapists and whomever into paradise, irregardless. Yeah, we say he's the most merciful, more merciful than anything. Yeah. And how, is it, how is it just? So my, my point is, if you've got somebody that uh, is inclined to sin due to their nature, and well, from my point of view, they don't have the ability to do otherwise. We're not you know, Christians, mate. Again, this, this is your problem, right? None of us said that. Your fitra, your inner self, is not what orders you to do sin. Everybody okay. has a choice. Some people, hold on, listen. Some people who were murderers, like the hadith about the one who killed 99 people and then made it 100, he repented, even though he was raised in such an environment and all of that, but he repented, Allah forgive him, right? So you have a choice. This is this is your mistaken thought, that as if your DNA, DNA code RNA makes you sin. That's not the way it is. People from the same household, same environment, same people change. 
I don't Allah believe is the you. most merciful. I'll give you an example once again. With again, you got to open your mind a little bit, right? You're a parent. You want the best for your children. You guide them. You give them choices. You you educate them. You do whatever you can. In the end, if they still choose not to follow, that has to be their choice, and they have to deal with the consequences. But you were a great parent because you gave them every opportunity. Allah is the most merciful. He loves us. He gives us guidance. He made four of us, five of us sit and talk to you for this long as a means of guidance for you. He opened up these channels for you. But now it's your choice. And you will be held accountable for your choice. All right. I'm going to do an Elsa and let you go. Take Thanks, care. Thanks, Allah guide you. I mean. <sighs> I did when he said that he'd spoke to Yusuf already. I was kind of concerned because that's not the impression he gave from his um, email. And to say that he's you... willing to have his mind opened, how does an art determinist? How does a heart determinist have his mind opened? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Anyway, but this is the problem. People take Christian ideology or they take their own mindset. You know, again, the examples he gave were, uh, were there was no choice. You know, you're a robot, you're programmed, you're a ball rolling down with pins. But the example that Khalil gave and I gave and all of us gave were very clear. I mean, if anybody wants to know the truth, it's evident. Right? I just want to, want to point out. Well, it might take a while. You, know? you said uh, he was willing to have his mind changed. <laughs> How does willing. a hard determined yeah, yeah, yeah. Have How will can you be willing <laughs> without a will? All right. Um, okay, so the people the people have been calling out for a Christian, as it says in Tombstone. You oh, call down I'm the thunder. I'm going to bad ceiling. I'm going to bad ceiling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Call down the thunder, <sighs> and here it is. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. oh, come on, sh sh Shaku, man. Why, why are you saying? Oh, I was saying, how you doing? I thought you were. I thought you were bringing someone else on. To be honest, that's no well, problem. No. Uh, uh, Terry, Terry's not been on for a while. Monsieur, there is sure. Can you please? Someone never takes to Terry. Uh, so mes to... mes salutations, Khalil. How you doing, man? Uh, mesdames Bonjour. and Monsieur, thank you very much for the hospitality. Thank you very much. Huh? On a terminé par avec toi. Uh, come on, Khalil. Be nice. Be nice. Be nice. I, I'm, I'm, I'm engaging with you people to, to, to understand if there's any bridge, bridge that we can connect. So I have Merci a, a, a no problem. Be nice. Yeah, no problem, uh, Sheikh. No, no problem. Now you know knowledge. You can get knowledge by experience. Uh, so my question, uh, in line with the, the spirit of the conversation you had with the last guy. Is uh, who is no, worthy? no, no, you're a Christian, man. Are you gonna come with a Christian flex? No, no, definitely Christian. Christian. Right, come right. on, come on, come on, Hamza. Sure? No, don't, don't, don't it, disconnect me and boot it, me by in the way, less than uh, three minutes. Don't get me wrong. Did, did you watch the, the or, or, or yeah, check for that thing? I think it's gonna post tomorrow. There's a Christian preacher that came out uh, at One Message Foundation. You'll see it. And man, he he took you guys all off the manhaj, man. What does he, that mean? Uh, uh, <laughs> he didn't consider any of you guys Christian, David. No, you no, but that, shake, shake, shake. I give glory. I give glory to Jesus Christ for what you did with uh, Anthony Rogers and Sam Shamoon, because none of these people are Christians. So you're doing exactly what God, because by by showing the weakness of their foundation, it shows that nice. they're not Christian. Because Christianity is infallible. So once you can do that with me, then you could say you you scored a point. So did you just say uh, Christianity, right. just say Christianity <laughs> is infallible. I, I, that's what I said. So I'm, I'm going to bring an uh, argument and I would like wait, to see how wait, you guys wait, engage wait, with that. Wait, wait, wait. Ah, wait, Khalil, wait. you're already afraid. Just, just Come know. on, Khalil. I just want to know which Christianity you're talking about. The real Christianity. Uh, whatever is written in here. Okay. Right, can, can I ask you about a question then? Then in yeah, go Second ahead. Chronicles uh, yes. 18 22. Can you read Please, that? go ahead. No, go, tell me what the point is. Oh, read it so then I can tell you the point. No, no, make the, the point. Make the, no, let's not right. waste the time of the people. So, all right. The Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets of yours, and the Lord has declared disaster against you. Yes. What do you think about that? Uh, the, what was the verse prior to that? Um, so, so he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. And the Lord said, you shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do so. 
Uh, uh, give me, give me the first because uh, now, now this is very interesting. You might be teaching. It. <laughs> so this is why no, 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 I told but, you look it up, yeah, right? But no, you were uh, like, thank you, thank you, thank right. you. Shake, shake. You came with, you came you. with something this year. But um, I, I still have a question for you guys. But we'll do the second chronicles. <laughs> I responded. No, you, you made a statement. That's why I brought this up. So that was no problem. I like, I, I, I like you a lot. Cool. So what, what was the verse? I like you too, bro. No problem. What's the well, verse? What, what city are you in? I'm Montreal. 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 Yeah. A little too far to invite you. Right. It's no problem. Uh, if you're ever what, in San Diego, come see me. Man. No problem. Uh, like I said, I, I like what Second you did. Second Chronicles. The... Yeah, go ahead. 1822. 18, Second Chronicles, 1822. It's beautiful, beautiful. 1822, all right? So let's see what it says here. Go for it. Is this the Bible you wrote? <laughs> I'm sorry? You wrote a Bible? Is this the Bible that you wrote? What, what does that mean? Come on, Hamza. Let's, let's not divert, all right? Let's, let's, let's stick on topic. No, 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 no. When, when in the past we've spoke about Bibles and we've quoted from Bibles, yes, you said they're not the real Bible and you've got the real Bible. I never said that. I said you're quoting the English. Like one of our conversation was you were quoting, appealing to the English or the King James. And I said, let's go to the Hebrew for more context. Same thing with so, uh, the, the Quran, right? You say, let's go to the, uh, uh, to the, to the well, original language. There's a big language. difference in that. There's a big no, difference. No, it's the that. same thing because you well, say, I'm let's go to the original language, the right? I'm not going to say that. There's a big difference. There's a big difference because the, the, the Bible was written down in what language? Different languages. Uh, Aramaic. Right, right. So why go to the Hebrew? Aramaic, Hebrew, Greek, Greek, Greek. <laughs> Latin. Yeah, Come on, Hamza. Know? Come on. I know. I know. I know. And what language is the Quran revealed in? Uh, the Quran is revealed in uh, Arab and is translated into different languages, right? No, no. It was revealed in Arabic. Revealed. So we go to the Arabic. But you, you go into what? Anyway. Continue. I'm going to the original language. Just go to Chronicles. Yes, thank you. Just, go. Just so everybody knows, we're only going live. We're only on today for another hour because uh, David and Daniel are debating at 1 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time, I think. Is it Eastern Standard Time or Central Standard Time or some U.S. Standard Time? Something across the pond. So anyway, so okay. here in Blighty, it's 1 a.m. So I'm going to give everyone a chance to go make their popcorn and this and that for that debate. So today the arena will be finishing at 12.30. So Terry, I'm not going to give you loads and loads of time because we have got a few people backstage. No problem. Although I'm looking at Ray and I am looking at Isan and I'm thinking, shaking my head. Anyhow, carry on. All right. Thank you very much. So it says here, then came out a spirit. This is in the, the, the congregation of God. A lion spirit came and said, uh, it no, stood before. Uh, then a spirit came forward. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before the Lord. Lord. Let, let me read it. I'm, I'm going to address what you're saying. Please. So uh, before Yahweh and said, I will entice him. And Yahweh said unto him, how? And he said, I will go out and be a lion spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And Yahweh said, thou shalt entice him knowing the future, like what you were saying to the last guy, and thou shalt prevail. Go out and do even that. And is that it? Or 22 hours ago? Okay, no problem. And therefore, behold, quoted, right? and therefore, Yahweh, uh, uh, therefore, behold, Yahweh has set a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets, and the Lord Yahweh has spoken evil against you. Then that, and then you, 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 Continue reading the, the passage. You see that uh, God uh, warns him by a prophet to say, listen, so, listen to so, what I'm saying. Well, can I finalize? Because this is what you did please. the last time. You stopped. I'm listening. So context. Okay, perfect. So God warns him through a prophet. Don't do it. And what, what did the, 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 the king do? With a lying spirit in his mouth. No, no, no. A real prophet. He, he, because if you keep well, reading, how did you, you separate between this is the prophets of God of Yahweh here. No, it's not the prophets of God. Wow, it's so, so Where did you get that from? Really, it's uh, interesting. Did, look, did you look in the context of your reading? Uh, right? If you read verse twenty-eight to thirty-four, you see sure. there's a difference. The the prophets of Baal are the one who uh, uh, who uh, deceived them, as opposed to Micaiah, the prophet of God who warned them. So, what does yeah. it mean? Basically, God removed this light. Because he is merciful to all, he shines but on the good and the bad. Can you quote the but actual I, verses, or because you, you're, you're giving a your own opinion I'm, here? No, no, no. Uh, Listen, I, I want to see textual evidence for what you're no saying. No problem. Shake. Okay. I could teach you about the Bible, so I'm going to teach you here. I'm here. To I learn. could. No problem. But let me finish my statement, so that way you understand my point. Everything I'm saying right now, I can substantiate all throughout Scripture, because this is not the only example of this happening. It happened in Job, and it happened also in Ezekiel. So my point to you is, the prophet that are deceiving are the prophets of Baal. God knew he would 
entice him. And God even showed him mercy by showing my, uh, by telling Micaiah to warn him. He didn't accept the warning and he was deceived. So God removed his light and allowed evil to, uh, uh, to overtake uh, uh, the king. So I'm trying to figure out what is the point you're trying to establish here? Okay. So or do you want me to read the whole chapter for you? No. Okay. So when this lying or this spirit comes forward and God says, I will put this lying spirit in yes. the mouths of prophets. Yeah. Can you show me the verse that shows which prophet this is discussing? Um, well, you can keep reading. It says here. Uh, so I have to read the all the way 28. <laughs> I have to, have to read. Look, look, look. Don't okay, read, it, read it. Don't read okay. it all. Just skim through and find the part where it where it indicates it. Uh, I, I'm sorry. It's, it's all the way uh, from 28 to 34 for you to understand the context. I'm, so I'm I could read it for you. 28 to 34, but there's no verse that I... Okay, so, okay, so a quick question. Uh, can, can what I is the name of the prophet? I let you, I let you finish, okay. right? Sorry, sorry. Thank you. So... This is the thing. When we are reading a verse, it's very easy to say there's a whole bunch of this and that, but let's stick to the actual context, right? Yes, so here please. we have, a, then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said to him, in what way? And again, I'm reading the King James. You, you're different. I understand. Which is again, still the same, right? Um, and I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, you shall persuade him and also prevail, go out. So the Lord is ordering a lying spirit, right? Therefore, look, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets of yours. So God puts lying spirits in the mouths of prophets. Okay, so let me help you out, though, because, uh, again, like I said, when it comes to... Uh, okay, uh, when it comes to, uh, uh, to Islam, I can perhaps go to you, but let me help you out with the words uh, to put. It's the word Nathan, to set. So what it, it has diverse meanings. So again, in line with the context and the pattern established in scripture, what it means is God removes his light and evil befell uh, be, uh, him. Where is that evidence in the, in the actual text? I... I, I I can do that with you as well if you don't want. I could go to the text I'm specifically. I, but I asked listen, you but for listen, a particular listen, verse. I understand, I understand. My point to you is the context, if you want to stick to this chapter alone, if you want to isolate this passage from all of Scripture, no problem. I couldn't do that. But the pattern of Scripture goes against what you're trying to present. That's first of all. Second of all, you don't understand the word to say, uh, to put. You don't know the Hebrew of it, right? And third of all, because uh, it has word? diverse. What's wait, wait, word? one second. What's one word? second. Is has diverse application. Let me make my points, and then we can elaborate so it, every the point. In Hebrew, you make yeah, yeah, I, and right then right. I can elaborate more. I could elaborate more. And lastly, uh, Sheik, um, you said, how do you know which prophet uh, uh, the lion spirit came through? Uh, do you know uh, the prophet of God that's mentioned in the in the chapter uh, eighteen? What's his name? Hold on. Uh, hold on. Okay. Let me let me explain this. Okay. Okay. This is not just saying one prophet, right? I mean, it, it, the plural sense is used, right? Plural sense of where? What, what, what are you talking about? So let's uh, let's look at the. Uh, this is why I like to read the actual verse. So you should have read it uh, before uh, making the point, right? I, I did read it, and I'm going to make it again. But I'm asking oh, you, was it? There's a difference. Hold on, hold on. I'm just quickly. There's a difference. Look, there's a difference. Look, 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 look. look. Why, I why, let why? you speak. You let me speak. That's the way it works, bro. Okay. So the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets. Okay. So this is not a particular prophet. Okay. Correct. Okay. Now, my question is the explanations you're bringing. Yes. Can you just tell me a particular verse that shows that context? Okay. No problem. Uh, since you are familiar with this argument, right? I'm going to ask. No, I'm going to no, respond. No, 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 you see, you see, you a question. I, I'm answering the question. I'm, I'm, you're not I'm, answering the question. I, I, I am because you don't know what I was about to say. Words. You're not a prophet. So let me make my statement and then you then you can tell me if I answer your question or not. All right. So Jehoshaphat made a clear statement about one prophet. What is his name in this con in this very chapter that you're appealing to? What is the name of that prophet? Can you just tell you me don't me? know. You don't know. Okay. So. So you made an hold argument. Hold on. Hold on. Can I, hold can on. I you know too. You know. Wait, 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 wait. Again. Hold on. Hold on. You made an argument of two verses bro, in one calm chapter. Down. Calm down. Two verses. Bro, relax. Calm Khalil, down. Let's calm let the man. Down. He can defend himself. No, no, it's not about defending. Just calm down. What happened? I can't be bothered. Uh, look. 
the, the issue here, the the issue issue is, is, this guy needs to ask a question before he goes to work. Yeah. I, I think this is the guy. The, the issue to is he asks when you should ask should. a simple question for textual evidence. When the person responds with a question or is unable to give you a reference, it's because he knows he's wrong, right? It's a very simple verse. It's very clear. He's the Bible expert according to him. So just ask, read me the verse that shows the explanation that you're saying, and he's unable to. Right, we'll give him time. Now. Let him go. I ask a question. What, Terry, um, do, do your research. Come back with the answer. I'm just going to see this Johnny. I think this is the guy who needs to go to work, but he's close to Islam. has got some questions, I think. Johnny, you're muted. Uh, hello, hello, guys. You hear me? Hello, Johnny. Doing? I can hear you. Are you uh, the guy who's going to work that's close to Islam? Yes, yes, absolutely. Oh, okay, good. You've got the right guy. I'm here. Uh, I'm a Christian, Orthodox, so to speak, and... Um, to be honest, I've been searching for the truth, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm not close to God in, in some sort of sense. And my friend, my friend actually recommended Islam for me. And we've been debating in some private calls and like not really getting anywhere because um, like I can't see your prophet with the same eyes that you look at him, you know what I mean? Like as an as like the best human that walked the earth. I don't know if that's the general opinion or consensus on the matter, is it? It is. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, so for me, that's Jesus, you know. And since Muhammad is a human, you know, he's not infallible. But we, we Christians, we believe Jesus is infallible since, you know, son of God, right? He's, a, he's God. So what I'm trying to, to get like... I'm, I'm trying to get to the point where, like, okay. I can see so, Muhammad second, with the... Let's just make sure we're discussing the same topic. I mm -hmm. appreciate you coming on, and, and I, I want to have this conversation. We as Muslims... Oh, I'm are not sorry, is it a specific topic? No, 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 no. I'm just saying, oh. we as Muslims don't really sit around comparing prophets. Like, we don't really sit around saying, okay, was okay. Moses better or Jesus better? We believe in all of them. We love all of them. But you made a statement that I just mm, want to make mm. sure that I understand. Okay. You said Jesus is the son of God, right? Yeah. So do you mean like a physical son or do you mean like uh, in the sense that there are many sons of God in the sense that er, scripture would call them out of respect? No, it's, it's not metaphorical, to... man. Like... Okay. So let me ask you something. Do you have a Bible? Is it physical? Oh, I do. Is it not a physical one. No, I, I okay. read on... Uh... On my phone. Okay, it's okay. Wait, wait, Johnny. So look up Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. Okay. Because I'm assuming you're basing your knowledge on the Bible, right? Yep. Okay. Good. This is the Old Testament, though. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is the Old Testament. It's part of the Bible. It's, right? it's just in the Bible that you study, right? I mean, the Old Testament is a part of the Bible. Of course, right? of course. Okay, good. So can you read it for me, please? Uh, Exodus 4, 22. Uh, then say to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn son. Hmm. Israel. Are you reading? Not Jesus here, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, so let me let me ask you for a couple more what? favors. So second second Samuel. All right. Let's go. Seven seven thirteen and fourteen. Seven thirteen and fourteen. He is the one who will build the house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he will be my son. When he does this wrong, I will punish him. Uh, this uh, is about sorry. Solomon, by the way, right? Just a context. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, when he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod wielded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hands. Okay. <clears throat> the Psalms, Psalms of David, uh, two seven. This is all before Jesus. This is. Old Testament. Peace and blessings be upon all the prophets. Okay. Shake, do you mind if I just take Johnny out at the knees? No, no, hold on. Hold on. Let, 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 let's just get through this exercise real quick. <laughs> all right, then I'm going to take you out of the knees, Johnny. I'm going to let you shake the legs you. Then I'm going to take you out. Let's have some fun. Uh, Come on. Johnny's a good guy. I like Johnny. No, no, I'm going to do it nicely, but I'm just going to... All right, Psalms 2... To be honest, seven. I can't really find it. I find... Oh. Wait. Psalms. Hmm. So you have the book of Psalms, Is it, right? I will proclaim the Lord's decree. Is it that one? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I will proclaim the Lord's decree. Uh, he said to me, you are my son. Today I, I have become your father. 
I have begotten you or become your father. Okay. Hmm. Um, let me just make it easier for Hamza's time frame. So uh, Jeremiah chapter 31, 9, as for I am a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. Um, if you okay. look at the genealogy of Jesus, it ends with the son uh, of Adam being the son of God. Hmm. So my question, uh, Johnny, how many kids does God have? <laughs> you present an, an excellent point, to be honest. Thank you. I appreciate your honesty. Um, but uh, the thing is, you know, it comes down to um, what uh, what stands in John, especially so, John one one. You know. So, so the right. question there gets Can to I come be, with my bat now? Hold on, hold on. I know your bat, and I know your knees, and and I know what you're coming with. But let me just tell Johnny one thing, right? All right. The mm. question I have before, and I know what Hamza is going to say. I've used it as well. Trust me, I know where he's going. But the, just a question to kind of help you is, why is it that Christians mm. take the word son, even begotten son, even firstborn, even in the New Testament when it talks about Adam, and use it differently for Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him, and differently for the earlier. And don't say because Jesus didn't have a father, because Adam didn't have a father or mother. And he was called the son of God in the New Testament, right? But those okay. are all taken as not being the actual sons of God by Christians when Jesus is by somehow in, in a hypocritical uh, method taken as physically or as a part of God. Um, that's something that I find interesting. And I hope, Johnny, that today... Well, I can, verses... I, can, I can answer in some sort of way, if you like. Okay. Um, and then I'll let I mean... finish it off. Okay. I mean, to be honest... It comes down to what Jesus said, you know. I mean, he said stuff like, "Before, before Abraham was, I am." And uh, well, <laughs> what else did he say? One. I and the Father are one. And all right, Johnny, 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 Johnny. Now, I, I, I have to right, okay. step in. Sorry, forgive me. Sorry, Chef. A beautiful point you made. Excellent point, and I think Johnny can reflect upon that. Right, you seem confident in knowing what Jesus said, did, where, when, did what, whatever. How do you know that? Okay. It's true? Why do you believe this is true? How do you know what Jesus said? I believe the the Bible has not been changed. Why do you believe that? What? Ooh, wow. I mean, what says that it has okay. been changed? So you said you believe, you believe the Bible hasn't been changed, yeah? That's your belief. Mm -hmm. Would you say that? Yeah. yeah. Right. And you know belief becomes delusion when it's countered by overwhelming evidence to the contrary, yeah? Evidence such as? So you believe the Bible has never been changed. I mm. present evidence the Bible has been changed. You still believe the yeah, Bible has been changed. Them, so. Your belief becomes delusion, yeah? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, which Bible do you read? Uh, to be honest, uh, in New King James, but uh, King James works also. Why, why, why the King James? <laughs> I believe it's the most established one. What does that mean? Um... How do I explain this to you? Like, I mean, it has been the, the general standard for so Since many when? years. Since when? Since it came out. And when did it come out? I don't have the exact number in my head, man. But so, which, manus which manuscripts have been used for it? Oldest? I'm, or not, a, not, I'm not a heavyweight on this topic. Do you mind? Really sorry. Brother Hamza, do you mind if I jump in at some point? Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can one, jump in. Johnny, this is mm. a Bible that I have that has the Greek and English, and it has a reference to all the earliest and most established manuscripts. Okay. What's the name of that so, one? This is called the New Testament Grise uh, by uh, uh -huh. Nestle and Aland. Okay. Nice. Okay. okay. So what this does, I'm just going to help you, Johnny, because I don't want you to walk into these kind of traps, right? Okay. Uh, I'm a nice guy. See, I'm like you. <laughs> okay. Um, so this has the, well, I don't know if you can see really well, but it has it's the so white. Greek, yeah, yeah, I see. Greek, English, and then it has the references to the manuscripts. Oh, so that's the, great. The verse you mentioned, John 1030, which is yeah. that the father and I are one. If you look at the references, it's actually missing from all of the earliest and best established manuscripts, right? Okay. It's not there. This was made up. You mean right? in, in this Later book? Later times. I'm sorry? In this book, right? When you look at John 1.1, 1, 1, it's missing, yeah? No, no, no John, John 1.1. 1.30, 1. where yeah. it talks okay. about the Father and I are one. 
Okay. Has, it's not just in this book. When you look at the early and best accredited manuscript, it's okay. missing. So just to give you a heads up, I mean, this is, for example, the New International Translation. Even if you look mm. at NIV, they have taken out many of the verses, and I've marked ones that are missing because they said these are fabrications. Okay? Are you aware of that, Johnny? Okay. Okay. No, I'm not. Johnny. Right. So if, if, if I bring you an NIV Bible and I put it next to your KGV Bible... I know they're verse... not the same. Yes, yes. No. That is correct. What do you mean they're not the same? I mean, they're different translations. No. No, 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 no. I mean, in the in the way that so, no. some of them don't even no. say what the other one says. That's true. No, yes. no, 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 no. Verses... It's not about, this is not about translation or interpretation. This is basically. Yes, I understand. I understand what you verse mean. Verse is missing. Verse is missing. The, I mean, are we talking? You open the King James Bible, for example. Well, I mean, find... uh, if, if, Johnny, if you look Johnny, at. Johnny. Two ears, one mouth. Just listen a second, please. You got the King James Bible that contains Acts 837. So if you open up your King James Bible, go to Acts 837, it's there for you. Yeah. Open up an NIV Bible, there's no first 37. It's been removed. It goes from 36 to 38. There's no 37 okay. there. Which is evidence but, of change. But I actually found it. No, in your King James Bible, it's there. It's no, not in, in, the in, NIV, in NIV, I found it. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. Uh, um, yeah, look at the footnote. No, go on, look at it. All right, sorry. Re read your Bible from 36 to 38 then from the NIV. If you believe with all your heart, you may. The Enoch answered, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. It doesn't say that in the NIV, mate. I don't know. I'm reading NIV right now. You're not reading the NIV right now. I'll read the NIV. I mean, I don't, I'll read the NIV right now. What's right. Second? You're reading the KJV right now. Well, uh, to be honest, now I see it's only footnotes. <laughs> as, as the, as the right. said. I told you, look at the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, so it's not in the scripture. I got ahead of myself, yeah. I know, I know. So the question needs to be asked, why is it not in the Bible? Why is it in a footnote? Well, I was going to address that, but you stopped me. I mean, we have some Bibles, let's see, let's say the Ethiopian. They have no, some no, no, books no. we don't have, stop, right? Stop, stop, Johnny. Let's just stick with the NIV and the KJV. Why does the NIV not have Acts 8.37? I have no clue, man. You tell me. Right, I'll explain it to you. Because the NIV was a revision of the Bible done after the discovery of the Codex Sinaiticus by Tischendorf okay. at the end of the 19th century, which discovered the oldest manuscripts of the New Testament. Mm. And in the oldest manuscripts of the New Testament, there is no Acts 8.37. So Just it's a fabrication. Exactly. Just as there's no long ending of Mark, just as there's no John 1, 5, 7, there's, they're not there. Just listen to this. There's no story of an adulterous woman in the Gospel of John. He without sin cast the first stone. It's not in the oldest manuscripts of John. These are changes. Yeah? Okay. So this tells us the Bible has been changed. Because all the Bible is today is supposed to be translations of manuscripts and you're holding a bible in your hand today with verses where you will not find the greek in the oldest manuscripts so that verse has been added by somebody can i can i ask you something you can what if i read the coin greek one yeah we're talking about the greek one we're talking about the greek it's not in the greek so, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I tell if you, i read right? that one and not kjv then I'm basically good to go if you cannot present no, any other mean. evidence. No, 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 no. Johnny, the Greek manuscripts that you have, and that's why I was showing you this, and if you like, I mean, I can get you a link to you can buy it. <clears throat> yeah, it does it not shows... include Acts. No, no, not just that. It shows the differences between the different Greek manuscripts. Many have differences. That's okay. why if you, if you look at the New World Translation, there are verses that they have changed from King James because they found the original, the oldest Greek manuscripts didn't have them that way. They were fabricated later. But let me let me ask you something, John. You have the your, the one you read. I'm, forget about Anavi. We're just going to go. Okay. Can you read right. John 17, 20 um, and 21? 
Mm. All right. Uh, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. So here, Jesus, according to the Bible that you have, shows that the disciples and whoever believes in him are one with the Father. So when Jesus, in the other verse, you said, me and the Father are one, are you also going to believe that every disciple and every believer in Jesus is a part of God? Well, I mean, we are not one with the Father. We are one with each other. But, but, if if but you read again. again. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Read, read. Yes, yes, it does. Okay. That they all that, may be one as you, the Father, are in me and I am in you. That they also may be one in us. Who's us? Who's us? That would be Jesus and the Father. There you go. So we are one in the sense that we are all part of God and we are divine all, uh, just as Jesus is one with the Father? So so this this verse is supposed to like undermine Jesus' divine divine no, no, nature? No, it, it no, 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 no. Clarifies, it no. clarifies that when Jesus... Don't worry, Khalil, we get your chance, mate. It clarifies mm -hmm. that being one is in the sense that they're on the same page, as we would say in America. Same or, purpose. Like we say... We same purpose, right? Like we say we are one nation, right? Okay. That means okay. we have common goals. We have same purpose. We have things that we're united upon. It does not mean we're physically the same, right? And this verse illustrates the meaning there. So you can be clear that this doesn't mean Jesus is God or is a part of God, but meaning that Jesus is upon what God ordained. They're one in what they're, the mission that he was sent with. Right. Okay. I, I just want to take it up a level for you. Because mm -hmm. I think I've diagnosed your problem, Johnny. What is it? Okay. Do you believe the authors of the gospel were, uh, were disciples of Jesus? I would say, uh, I mean, not all of them are. Some of them uh, came after. All right. Do you believe they were eyewitnesses to what they wrote? No. They had first hand experience with. Um, no, the, did they the were they eyewitnesses people. to what they wrote? It's no, very no, they were not. They were not. They were not eyewitnesses to what they wrote. No, <coughs> not all of them. Some, some were, yeah. But who, who? Okay, so you think some of them were eyewitnesses? Well, the ones that actually ate with Jesus, and okay, no, no, they weren't. They weren't. I mean, the, the were earliest, the earliest uh, manuscripts are seventy years after no, no, he forget, died, right? Forget, no, no, right, right, right. Forget, forget no, no, no. I'm just trying to diagnose your problem. Do you believe the authors of the Gospels were disciples of Jesus? Uh, I answered that already. You did, but then you said they weren't eyewitnesses. Well, if they aren't eyewitnesses, then they wouldn't be disciples in that way. They, they so couldn't they have been the, oh, okay. the first ones. Shall I, I mean, rephrase the question? Okay. Are sure, the right. authors of the Gospels written by one of the tw some of the 12 disciples? There we of go, Jesus yeah. No, no. 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 Right. Do you believe they were written by eyewitnesses to the events that are written about? Uh, can you say it again? Sorry. Do you believe they were written by eyewitnesses to the events that are written about? No. No. And do you believe they were inspired by a Holy Spirit when they wrote whoever they were? Uh, yes. Why? Uh, because they were all uh, baptized. <laughs> Weren't they? Who, who, who were the authors, Johnny? So, who were the authors? What do you mean? Who People were the authors? Were really getting well, baptized, for example, uh, for example, no, no, who time. were the authors? I mean, we have John, we have Matthew, we have. No, 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 stop, 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 stop. What Let's do you mean? Again. They weren't disciples of Jesus, nor were they eyewitnesses. You don't know who they were. According to okay. Christian scholarship, they're anonymous. You don't know who wrote them. Yeah. So, okay. Johnny, how can you then claim they're baptized when you don't know who they are? Well, I mean, if they do have the Holy Spirit, they would have to be baptized, right? Johnny, Johnny, here's here's the <coughs> MacArthur Study Bible. I'm just going to help you, Johnny, because I don't want you to walk into Hamza's elaborate traps here, right? <laughs> this is this is my, for my example, traps are like oh, flashing lights and everything. Yeah, like, yeah but he's still walking in. I, I like Johnny. I got I got to help a brother out, right? So, okay. 
in I gotta be honest though. Before you before you say that, I'm not a heavyweight on this, so it's okay. That it's okay. may be why I'm, I'm a you. little bit of gullible regarding this. You know what I mean? You're, you're not gullible. You're not a heavyweight. You're a good guy. We hope Allah guides you. Uh, you know, you're. I'm just trying to humanity. reach the truth, man. We hope you like any of you. Brother and Iman. Can I, I got uh, you? Can I so this this is the MacArthur Bible, just to help you. Just for example, then you can come in. Just an example. Um, under the the apostle of to the Hebrews, which is called the, the chapter called Hebrews, it says the author of Hebrews is unknown. Okay, we don't know, and this is according to uh, uh, evangelical Christian uh, Bible book, right? Study book, study Bible, um, and it says their possibilities are Paul, Barnabas, Silas, uh, Apollos, Luke, Philip, Pris Priscilla, uh, Aquila. The Clement of Rome, these all have been suggested, but in the end, it is unknown, uh, anonymous. Right? So, most Wait, is of that the really a you, thing? Yeah, wow. yeah, I mean, you can, you can here, 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 here. Um, there, I can send you a screenshot if you like, or yeah, you know, do so, can, please. If, if no problem, let me just, yeah. just so, get the reference of the book and you see it. Yeah, so I gave it. So the yeah, MacArthur, can, Mac, the, the MacArthur Study okay. Bible. Yeah, that's it. And you look up under Hebrews, author, page number, the beginning of the chapter. Sure, I got you. So they're, they're not actually numbered pages, but okay. if you just go to the chapter uh, Hebrews, chapter in the Hebrews. beginning, it says author and date. Okay, author. Okay, okay. thank you. Um, I can also just just so you can uh, help you out here. Same MacArthur, and this is again this is evangelical preacher mode Christian study Bible. But under Mark, the the gospel according to Mark, not by Mark, which mm -hmm. is important, it says for for they're talking about the 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 author, um, the anonymous author again. It says for he neither heard the Lord nor accompanied him, right? Meaning. The okay. authorship is by somebody who neither heard Jesus nor accompanied him. But so afterwards, no eyewitness, yeah. <laughs> no eyewitness, no actual name. But afterwards, as I said, he accompanied Peter, who who, who uh, commendated his instruction. So this is somebody, and anonymously, afterwards, somebody who never met Jesus. And this is Mark, the authorship of yeah. Mark, right? Yeah. And you can go through all of them and you'll find, and you can you can even look it up on Wikipedia. The authorship of most of the Gospels is just unknown. They're, they're anonymous authors. You can read the writings of Dr. Bart uh, Ehrman or others that have also mentioned this. So my, my, my question to you, Johnny, is you have one on one side a book that, as you said, that there are different versions that have different verses, that have different numbers of chapters, that were written 70 this is I'm, I'm i'm impressed with your knowledge johnny that you know most of them were at the earliest were written 70 190 years after the time of jesus peace and blessings be upon him we love jesus uh peace and blessings be upon him and then on the other hand you have the pure words of god not written by the prophet muhammad peace be upon him not the words of the prophet muhammad peace be upon him not the words of companions the words of god himself right you okay. know there are many contradictions, clear numeric contradictions in the Bible, right? Um, I would say we have copy errors. I'm not no, aware no, of no, many no, contradictions. No, 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 Sheikh, Sheikh, before not, you before you dig into that, Sheikh, just Go let us uh, 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 have a say. I like his... Go for it. Huh? Oh, hey. So, oh, so, uh, so uh, Still here. Yeah, no, it was, it was going to be kind of a joke, but then I was thinking about it seriously. And so, I, so no, no, I was going to say that's a lot. You and your jokes, man. I was going to say to Johnny, like, you know, I was baptized. Oh, you were? <laughs> yeah, uh, both in the Christian and the Orthodox Church before I reverted. And um, you know, and I was going to say that as the, as the joke, kind of like say, well, you know, since I'm baptized, that makes me a disciple. <laughs> you know, but uh, <laughs> you know, but the, the time, uh, what I really want, Johnny, is I moved into that, and I was thinking to myself, well, you know, like you talked about the Holy Spirit, and I've always found that fascinating. It's like, and something that I questioned when I was a Christian too, before I left Christianity, was um, was uh, well, if the Holy Spirit, if part of God was in me, then the reality is, I mean, I, I've seen responses, but I want to kind of hear your take. The reality is then I should have never left because that should have compelled me to stay. I mean, if there really was a Holy Spirit within me that was testifying the truth, I mean, there would be no way for my human self to really oppose that's, that. But that's not really how it works. I mean, okay. you have free will, right? 
No, no, we have free will. But I mean, just the testimony of that faith that having God, a part of God inside of you, I mean, how could I leave? Well, to be honest, if I speak from personal experience, I feel like something is guiding me in life to do the right choices, yeah. you know? That's and I here. avoid all, all the wrong ones. Yeah, and, but he's uh, like, Johnny. Yeah, okay. I, I will address what he said. I will. No, no, no. Uh, I'm going to say, I, I feel I'm being guided in my life to avoid all the bad choices and do the good ones. Yeah, I'm uh, not saying this is no, why... But no Holy Spirit is taking credit for it. So yeah. the one thing is, what, what, why does your guide... Have to be but I was going to get to the point, but you Go keep on. interrupting me, man. Like, on, man. I, I got baptized as an adult, right? N not as a baby. So after I got baptized, I feel like my life improved in such a way that, I, I mean, I, I cannot attribute this to anything other than God, right? It wasn't some random Johnny. occurrence. Hold on, Johnny. Let me just uh, keep us back on the track that we were at. But Sorry. Just, just to quickly, I mean, many people have a sense of morality through different paths, right? Okay. But that's not really a judge between right and wrong. Uh, let's go back to first understanding what is the message of God, right? So if you look up uh, gospel according to Matthew, right? You have your phone or Bible with you, right? Uh, yeah, it's here. Okay. So in chapter 1, verse 16, uh, can you read it for me, please? Chapter 1, verse 16 of uh, which did you say that again? Ma Matthew, the gospel Matthew, according Matthew. to Matthew. Okay, thank you. Not written by Matthew himself. <laughs> uh, the genealogy of Jesus, yeah? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, Abraham, I can skip the first part. No, no, yeah, uh, so, so go from chapter 1, verse 16. 16, okay, okay. I, I wrote it wrong, sorry, man. No problem. I really appreciate your good manner. Uh, there we go. Uh, and Jake, uh, thank you, man. And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. And uh, Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Okay. W which version are you reading, by the way? Because that's not KG. Uh, new right now, KG. NIV, as it okay. came up on the first search. Sure. Doesn't matter, either one, but I'm just saying. But so when, I, when I read by myself, it's KJV or NKJV. Okay, so so let, let's just stick to NKJV to... because that's what Since I Since I saw Hamza's reaction on his face, so... No, well, the only reason I reacted that way... I had way, to address that. I stick to the Bible that you believe is true. Because if, you, if you're reading the NIV, that's not the word of God for you because it's had verses removed from it. And you said the Bible can't be changed. So KJV is your flex. So roll with KJV, okay. man. Well, okay, okay let's go. And Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born the Jesus. Eh, of whom was so born who, Jesus, who is called Christ. So, so Joseph, the husband of Mary, what's his father's name? Uh, Jacob. Okay, good. good. Um, can you go to Luke three twenty-three, please? Okay. All right. Uh, genealogy of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age, being, as was supposed, the son of Jesus, uh, the son of Joseph, sorry, uh, the son of Heli. Who's the father of Joseph? <laughs> to be honest, I've looked at this one before. <laughs> I have. Okay, good. 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 I didn't come to a conclusion, though. But, but I'm just reading the But scripture. this is the point that Heli or, or Jacob, right? So it's not the, it's two different fathers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. And if you look at the number of generations between Abraham and Jesus, they also don't match. Mm. Names, you, you can keep reading. They all are contradictory, um, all the way to David, um, or close to that. So okay. that's interesting, right? Now, let me ask you one well, more. Can I ask you something? Go ahead. Is Go it ahead. possible that this is the lineage of the mother and the father? No. Good question. Right? So, Why not? So, 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 good question, right? Um, if this was a lineage of Mary, then it would not be the son of, right? It would be the daughter of. Well, I mean, from from the fathers of that lineage and the fathers of that lineage, since. Sure, I so, mean, so, so let, let's look at them, right? But just, which just read one the text. Would be, which one would be Mary's then? Uh, I believe that would be Heli. I'm not really sure right now. Okay, so let, let's look at Luke then. You're saying in Luke, right? Yes. Um, so it says, uh, now you're saying that's Mary. So say Jesus began his ministry at about 30 years of age as supposed son of Joseph, the son of Heli. Wouldn't Joseph. that then be 
Joseph, the son of Heli? How could that be Mary's? I mean, the, the, the thing I presented is that it's from the lineage of Mary. No, right? listen, to, Mary, listen to the Mary text. and Joseph from the same lineage? Were they brother and sister? They're not. That's so the listen point. to the text. Listen to the text again. Read it again, Shay. Johnny, you, you're, you're not on the spot. We, we don't want you to feel nervous. Look, you're welcome here. We want you to relax. I feel like I have guns pointed at me. You know what I mean? You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. <laughs> look, look. My hands are here. Trust me. Trust me. We're all, we're all rooting for you to be a Muslim. We welcome you here. Many people would want to be here, but you got this opportunity because Hamra right. likes you. Right? Now, the question is, I just want you to think through your response yourself in a relaxed manner. There's no hostility here, right? Sure. It says, now Jesus himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age, being the supposed son of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi. These are all sons. And it starts with Joseph being the son of Heli. So this couldn't possibly be Mary, right? Okay. Okay, good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I agree, I agree. Good, good. Now, when, if we go to Matthew, it says Jacob begot Joseph. So okay. Begot is from his son. Yes. So yes. it couldn't possibly be Mary because it clearly says Joseph. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they couldn't be the same because then, then you would say Joseph and Mary are brother and sister and some incest issues would come into play and that would be a whole different ballgame. And I know we don't <laughs> believe that. So but we also believe Mary came from the tribe of Levi, not the tribe of Judah. Right. So now, if you go to Matthew 27, 5. You prepared all of them for me. Let's go. Oh, no, 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 no. Trust me, as, <laughs> as important as you are, you're not that important that I'm nah, prepared I'm joking, for you. I'm joking. <laughs> I, 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 if you go to the One Message Foundation channel, you can see we do this all the time. I've been studying the Bible since I was in my teens. Uh, the Bible oh, that well, I have I really meant is me. that you collect all of this uh, yeah, yeah, present, yeah, look, look at present this. it at some this? point, you know what I mean? Do you see this? Yeah, yeah. You see this? Yeah. This, is just, this is the Bible I've had since uh, you know I was in Bible studies myself uh, trying to mm. learn. I didn't prepare mm. this to argue. This is, I mean, I have okay. many points that are not related to contradictions, um, killings, and all kinds of other things that I found. Whatever I didn't find uh, that I could understand, I would make a mark, and then I would ask a preacher or a priest, and Unfortunately, uh, they don't have the answers either. I see, I so, see. so let's read 27.5. Okay. Um, then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Excellent. So this is about Judas, as you can see in verse 3. I know. Uh, uh, one of them <laughs> where he hanged himself and the other where his uh, intestines gushed out or something like that. See, Johnny, you're so knowledgeable. man. Look at this. So, uh, first question I have is, what did he do with the money? Here it says he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple. If you go to Acts 1, verse 18, it says, Now this man purchased a field with the wages of inequity. So, he didn't throw down the money in the temple. He purchased a field. This yeah, man yeah, himself. Yeah. And he burst open in the middle, uh, he f falling headlong. And if you can look Google headlong. Long, <laughs> it's not, not possible. <laughs> Johnny, yeah. you it's really possible. Like now? It is possible. Alpha genes. So. Well, if we, if he would fall from a from a tall tall tree, then maybe. But then how it would, would he not, hang because, himself? Because right? if you fall from a tree, he would not fall headlong. He would fall straight. And there's no tree or hanging mentioned here. What is clearly mentioned, and, and again, it would not do away the contradiction of what he did with the money. Did he throw it away? Well, I mean, to be to be really honest here, we don't really know how tall the tree is. If you fall from the seven floor, seven floor, you would like spin around. You know what I mean? J Johnny, Johnny, did, what did he do with the money? Buy a field or throw it in the temple? Well, on that point, yeah, clear contradiction. Sure. Clear contradiction. I got you. I got you. What happened yeah, to the Holy Spirit guiding these I'm gonna people? Give you I'm gonna give you one more. Just and, and I've what I've read. Give you one more, right and Khalil, you gotta come in. Yeah. Before you go on to that, uh, I'm just gonna say what I've read is that this is two different experiences from two different authors. Excellent. And that is so a that, that mean, is a. Does that, does that, that mean some, one of the authors is incorrect? That is a problem in its in its own. You know what I mean? Johnny, Johnny, so if Johnny. it's from two different authors, is one of the authors wrong? Exactly. That's the point. Right. And I, if one I, of the authors is wrong, I've been speculating regarding this. Yeah. 
And if one of the authors is wrong, what's the point of the Holy Spirit? <laughs> yeah, what's the point? <laughs> Because that means that the, the authors of the Gospels can get it wrong, make mistakes, make errors, lie, invent history, and the Holy Spirit's going to allow it. So is yeah. it really the Holy Spirit? I don't think you so. You got a point. You got a point. I don't think so. Johnny, let me let me present something to you, okay? I, I really like you as a person. I can tell you're fair. I can tell you have a good heart. Thank you, Allah man. Guide you. So, from I mean, from the alamat, Allah knows the secret, right? But a belief in one creator that created me, that created you, that created Jesus, that created Muhammad, that created Moses, that created Abraham. Peace and blessings be upon all of them that loves us okay. all, that sent them with the same message. Worship one creator. Don't worship idols. Don't worship uh, cows and monkeys and, and statues and saints and all of that. That one creator sent the original message to Moses and David and Jesus and to the prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings upon all of them. Today, unfortunately, as you said, these are accounts of anonymous authors that were written later that were changed and are still being changed. New versions of the Bible are coming out, taking entire verses out, putting, taking entire subsections of chapters out and so on. But then we have the last testament, the Quran, that was revealed verbatim, letter by letter, word by word, the words of the Creator. And that was preserved in the memories of men who memorized it, many of them, in the lifetime of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and written down in the lifetime of the Prophet, peace be upon him. We have carbon dated copies, pages, and so on that can be carbon dated to that time period that match what we have today. The final message, accept it. You present a strong point. I have to right. so, be honest. So the way you, right. the way we do this now, you're gonna say uh, the testimony. Do you believe there's one God? I'm not gonna take the shahada, man. <laughs> Why not? Just one no. second. Just one second. I cannot do that. Johnny, Johnny, we we've. Uh, I mean, you're, I'm sure you're still trying to cling on to Christianity. Let me uh, let Khalil come in now, just to stand on your fingertips and just. Uh, wait, before you before we go there, I'm just gonna be honest. I'm not really religious. I barely follow so can, the, the Bible yeah, or anything. And what I'm trying to say is lately I've actually been speculating if there is a God or any God, you know. Be beautiful. Stuff Stop like it. that. So jo that in jo itself would actually prevent me from taking any shahada other than the Christianity stuff. You know? jo Johnny, all I want to do right now is crush your Christianity idea. Okay. I want to. I want to make it impossible for you to leave this arena, still believing Christianity is true, Bible's reliable, Jesus was the greatest man to walk the earth, and all this kind of stuff. Because you don't know. But Khalil's going to finish you off on that point. So Khalil, right. do your clubhouse flex. Yeah, um, I'm not really. A, I'm a lover, not a fighter. So I'm not going to try to finish him. I just wanted to say that. Tell that to a prostate parasite. Anyway, carry on. Sorry. I just wanted to say that actually, Johnny seems like a genuine man. I do truly appreciate his honesty and sincerity. Sometimes you can get a vibe, a feel of people that are sincere and nice. And I truly believe that. So I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him. To the Thank you, man. Path, and that is Islam. But uh, it's just a couple of things that you made earlier when you came in, right? You said about the Bible. You believe things because... So there are two things here. You either believe that Jesus this is God or Son of God and the Trinity, etc., all that stuff, because, you, because it's subjective. That's what you feel. And personal experience. Or because you can substantiate it textually, right? I don't. I can't find any other uh, source. You mean like absolute truth, yeah? Right. I mean, whatever concepts you believe who God is to be, right? Yeah. So the first one, if it's subjective, we have to like establish this that it's not really valid. You can't really substantiate that because that's a personal experience. Because you can bring, you know, a Hindu. I'll tell you the same thing. You can bring a Hindu lady. She might cry on this platform, and we will give you actually experience. Since and I believe those. Experiences are sincere. She actually experienced some sort of something, right? That guided her from doing drugs to becoming this or from prostitution or from just becoming a righteous person in general. And she believes that has to do with Krishna, right? And you can't take that okay. away from her because it's subjective, right? Now, the other option, B, would be to actually intellectually, objectively, neutrally, academically, scholarly prove that what you're presenting on this very platform is actually the word of God, right? Now, 
uh, with all due respect, I have to say that the Bible is not preserved. You said you believe it's preserved. And the brother, I think, did a wonderful job explaining. For example, to give you First John 5, 7. Uh, that is also uh, the end of Mark. It is not found in any manuscripts and was inserted later. And think about this, something interesting about the Gospel of Mark. So the resurrection would have been the most important event in the history of mankind. Can you imagine Mark writing the Gospel and talking about Jesus' sandals and everything else and missing the most important event, the resurrection? He does not talk about it. It was added later mm. by others to try to like substantially look, it's there. It's even by Mark, right? If you go, for example, to 1 Timothy 3.16, right? Uh, all revised version changed the verse uh, because it says in the KGV that God manifested in the flesh, right? And th this happened because the word us in Greek was forged and changed to theos to make it look like some sort of incarnation that God manifests in the flesh. Now, if you look at unanimously, any biblical scholar from any school of theology, Department of Comparative Religion, subdivision of textual criticism, you can look at James Tabor, Bauer Emin, James Dunn, Bruce Metzger, all of them. I'll give you any quotation you want, pages and all. They agree unanimously that this verse is forged. Literally, people change the word os to theos to try to, to prove the doctrine of incarnation. First John 5, 7 is just not there anywhere. It was added to try to substantiate the fact that the Trinity is in the Bible. This should ring bells and like put question marks all over your head thinking... Yeah, the Trinity second. is not in the Bible. That's why true. Are, the only why, thing we why, have is... Why are, uh, people, why are people adding verses that are not there to the Word of God? So this tells us that this document, with all due respect, this document, it can't be accepted in any court. And I know people swear on it and all that stuff, but academically, it can't be... Accepted in any theological platform. You can't go to a professor of theology and, and then try to use this as an actual evidence document because we know it's been forged. If a document has been tampered with and has inserted verses, as all biblical scholars unanimously agree upon, it's not some sort of conspiracy by some Ahmed or some. Can I, can I just ask you, those uh, biblical scholars that you mentioned, are they Protestants? They're Catholics, Protestant, Orthodox, and uh, atheists, all type. All of them. Okay, all types. Yeah, all right. All types, all of them. And a lot of them are like Christian. They're actually Christians. They hold the Bible. They carry the cross, right? But they agree that this... Look, I mean, you don't have to believe me. Even the Bible itself, it tells you that these verses are not found in any in ancient manuscripts. Like uh, the First Timothy 3.16, that it was forced from Osteos, even the Bible itself tells you, and they changed it to, which means which was manifest in the flesh. That was manifest flesh. Not God manifest flesh. There's no Theos there. In the Greek, in the ancient Greek manuscripts. So my point I'm trying to make here is that if this book is not preserved, you can't, mm -hmm. you can no longer use it as some sort of witness and document to try to say that. Because even think about this scenario: you want to go to the Day of Judgment, right? I can actually make an argument in front of God and be like, if Christianity is true, I'd be like, well, how can I use the Bible because I studied it and I found there are forgeries? I mean, God, I mean, I don't mean to like argue with you, but it would make sense that you would have sent another. Testament, not corrupted, makes sense that we can trace its chain of narrations and it can establish objectively that it's authentic. And then I will have to study that and then you can punish me if I, didn't, if, if I found truth and rejected it. But to follow this, I can't because we already know that there are forgeries. This is like, this is you don't discuss this anymore in School of Theology. You don't. It's agreed upon. Everyone knows there's forgeries in the Bible. I, I have two questions for you. Did you first uh, of all understand what I said? Did you process what I said to you, brother? I did, all of it. So that is well, why I really want to ask you. Before you ask me, just what do you think about what I said? Do you think it's fair to still use the Bible if, if it contains forgeries? If if we actually um, study it and like come to the conclusion, all of us, that I mean the scholars then, that it is, um, has been tampered with, then no. Right. Okay, good. Can I just Very good. this point? If I, if I know, just one point, right? Yeah. So... If we can't use the Bible as a reliable source of information to know what Jesus said, where he did, what he did, how do you mm. know he was this perfect man that you claimed in it originally? I mean, it's even in the Quran, <laughs> isn't it? No, 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 as a Christian. As a Christian. I believe the Quran. As a Christian. But I believe the Quran is true. Um, yes, we wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't be able to. So do you take that claim back now? Of him being perfect. Yeah, because you don't know. From the Bible. Uh, or, unless... Honest, I, I, still, I still believe it. So. 
you Why? still well, right, 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 right. So you still believe the Bible's reliable source of information, yeah? No, I still believe uh, Jesus is this uh, perfect being that Why do you never believe that? Listen. Why do you believe that? I just do. I, I can't explain Based it. Upon I, what, I just do. How do you know? Where, where do you get the information from about Jesus being this perfect man? Uh, I guess it's been told to me ever since I was a little kid. You know? And where does that information come from? From other people. And where are they getting the information from? From other people. And where are they getting the information from? The Bible. All the way back, yeah. Right, and we've just determined that that can't be trusted to report history reliably. Well, to be honest, we really haven't, until I've researched all of this, what you've said myself, well, and okay. come to the conclusion. Then okay, I can finally conclude that, yes, right. you're right. Or no, yes, I'm not going to allow you that little kind of escapism. Do you believe that the authors... Well, I didn't faith? come here to debate, so... Well, I don't uh, what you allow okay. is none of my concerns. I'm ex Christian. You know mate. what I mean? No, I'm not allowing you off the hook. All right? I'm not allowing you off the hook, mate. All right. So, just let's understand one thing. Do you still believe that the Bible, both authors of the Gospels were inspired by the Holy Spirit? Ah, <sighs> back, back to the first stone, huh? Well, no, we are, because we've already established that the authors of the Gospels made mistakes or lied. To be honest, I actually came here uh, to, to learn about Islam, man. Not to Johnny, present Christianity. Johnny, Johnny, there's no point us teaching you about Islam. And why we believe Islam is true, if you why? still think Christianity is true. Because if you still think Christianity is true, see, Christianity and Islam cannot be reconciled. So if Christianity is true, Islam can't be true. Why not? Is it not the same God? I mean, you say it is. I'll say it again to you. If Christianity is true, Islam cannot be true. If Islam is true, Christianity cannot be true. Because what is salvation in Islam condemns you in Christianity. And what is salvation in Christianity condemns you in Islam. So they are not reconcilable. So if you're coming into this room with this so idea... So then it's not the same God. One second, Johnny. Can we one agree second, on that? Johnny. It's not one the same. One second, Johnny. Johnny, Johnny, relax. Okay. Johnny, be good. Right. So if you're coming into this room thinking Christianity... <laughs> <laughs> if you're coming into this room thinking Christianity is true, then it doesn't matter what we tell you about Islam because it's not reconcilable with what you believe to be true. Well, it actually does because I will remember everything you said. No, no, uh... no, it don't work that way, Johnny. What I want to do to you is reduce you to agnosticism. Yeah, I want to reduce why? you why? to... The... Why do you want to do that? Because I want to why, take... Why can't I have... I, I see you as a victim, a social a victim. victim of your circumstances and people have lied to you or mistakenly told you things that they believe to be true which are not true and until you let go of this nonsense you're not going to be able to come to the truth so as far as i'm concerned i'm not i mean the sheikh does things a little bit differently to me um with me i'm not here to give you shahada i'm here to crush your christianity mate and once that's crushed then you can turn around to us I say, okay, fair enough. You've, you've demonstrated that what, what, what my beliefs are wrong or false. What about your beliefs? And then we, we invite you then to challenge Islam. But until we crush your Christianity, it's pointless. I believe, personally, yeah. So I'm going to repeat my question to you. Do you believe the authors of the Gospels were inspired by the Holy Spirit when it's been ex determined and demonstrated and proven that one of the authors lied or was mistaken? And wasn't corrected in that mistake i would say i'm not sure we haven't really presented theological evidence we have presented we theological evidence. did okay did did uh judas buy the field with the dough or did he throw it on the floor like i said that, that is not theological in itself no 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 forget it's theology. only about a historical uh, right, event right. that happened and here's right? the problem you've got you see your theology is based on the history yeah, you build theology on the words of Jesus and what he says. Yeah, this is how your theology is built. So you need the history to be sound to build the theology on top of it. So yeah, what I'm doing is, is, I'm not interested. Listen, listen, I'm not interested in challenging the theology. I'm collapsing your history. Yeah. So I'm showing you that you have no nothing to build your theology upon. So I'm going to ask you again: Did Judas pay the field with the with the silver? Did he buy the field? Or did he throw the money on the floor of the Pharisees? Which one did he do? I'm not sure. One of you the, presented two of them. Can't do both, can he? Can't, no. Right. So one of so, the authors got it wrong, yeah? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been here like I know, well, we're going a few months ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So one of the authors was wrong. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Did, did the Holy Spirit Must correct have. him? I mean, a few of them can't be correct. Exactly. Did the Holy Spirit correct him? In that case, no. Why not? Because I mean, we still see them in the Bible, right? So why did <laughs> why did the Holy Spirit not correct the mistakes? I have no idea, man. Maybe, right. I mean, what so you're presenting to me is that the Holy Spirit doesn't exist, yeah? Well, we've got two options. Either there is no Holy Spirit, or the Holy Spirit doesn't mind mistakes. Yeah? Okay. So, either one, we don't really mind. So, either the Holy Spirit does is existing, but lets them make mistakes and errors, yeah? Or there is no Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay. Now, you've conceded that the authors of the Gospels were not disciples, nor were they eyewitnesses. Now we're in the problem with the Holy Spirit, yeah? Why do you still believe what it says? Like I said, it must come down to what I've been taught, right? No, no, no. But we just demonstrated. Yeah. This is the Bible. But why do you believe what it says now? I I think, Johnny, I mean, just just to be clear, I mean, I understand what you're saying. Like somebody could be raised with their parents telling them that a monkey Mm -hmm. is God. Or somebody could be raised with their parents telling them two plus two is five. But you, Johnny, are intelligent. Obviously, being, but, but the, the, mm-hmm. I just want to add to that. Yeah, I really cannot abandon my faith in like two minutes. You know what I mean? Basically, oh, this, is, this is Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Let me. Let me That's why I'm trying to build like, everything. Yeah, I'm sorry. I you can go ahead. You can it's not easy. Johnny, take, take your time. We're not. We're not pressuring you. But let me ask you a question. And you want something theological? Does God know everything? I would say so. Yes. Okay. Good. So if Jesus was God or a part of God, meaning he is the same power, knowledge, then he would know everything, right? Does not know the time of the hour, right? Is, that, is that it? No, no, no. I, I, I'm just asking you I a think question. we're getting there, yeah. 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 That's one thing he doesn't that, know. That's yeah. one of the things. But yeah. the question there would be, if Jesus was God, he would know the hour, right? Well, to be really honest, in Orthodoxy, we believe that uh, the Father is the the fountain of divinity, right? Where it okay. flows down mm. to the Holy Spirit and uh, okay. to the Son. You don't believe in Trinity? Yes. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold so, on. No, it is, it is, is Trinity. The, is it's just that okay, gotcha. you must have a source. Gotcha. The monarchy of the Father. Let's take it. Let's take it. Let's take it. Yes. Let's take it one step at a time. We want to give you a comfort zone to speak. So, is the Father and the Son equal? Um, I mean, if he's the monarch, I get your point, yeah. Okay. So thing is, I'm at a point right now, people. whatever I say, I will have mm-hmm. to go back on my entire faith Good. and I fall in the trap, right? But Johnny, but Johnny... If I answer true. that, I'm, I'm out, mean, you know what I mean? You're, you're not. Listen, listen, Johnny, <laughs> you're already out because you you're know in gone. your heart what you're hearing is the truth. I know it's hard to leave your traditions and all of that. I'm not asking, but I'm saying is you know that Jesus can either be God and know everything, or he can be not God, and then there are things he wouldn't know. It can't be both. Okay. You know Judas either hanged himself or fell. He either bought land with the money or threw it. You know Obviously, yes. Joseph's father is either Jacob or he like. So I know it's not easy. Trust me, I wasn't raised in a practicing Muslim family. I grew up going to church. We got Asadullah, we got Brother Hamza, we got Yusuf. Uh, I think all of these brothers, not sure about Khalil, but all of these brothers were raised not Muslim, and they had to make that same difficult decision. But when you know something to be the truth... Wait, this Hamza, yeah? Yeah, this Hamza. He, you think you? he was born Muslim? He wasn't? I'm English. Wow, right? okay. Uh, okay, okay, okay. You don't see the gingerish beard? Come on. <laughs> it's kind of white, you know. I don't see that well. Look in the sides. Look in the sides. 48 to love, you know, yeah? Right. Well, to be honest, I have a night mode on on my monitor, so I, I, the uh, colors are uh, skewed. Hamza, okay. when, did, when did you become Muslim? Alhamdulillah, I accepted Islam t- uh, 2001. 20 years now, mashallah. So, so I was an atheist, though. Not, I'm not, I can't play with guess your, I'm not trying to guess your age, but that means you probably spent a good... 10 years before that, not being a Muslim, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Tw- right? 27 so years, mate, 27 years. I was trying to be nice. Uh, uh, but no, there, nice. that means oh, right. you spent a great deal of your life, not as a Muslim, 
when you became a Muslim, it was difficult. Asadullah, I'm sure, Yusuf, and myself, when I made the decision to be a Muslim, even though my family, many of them were by name Muslim, they gave me a hard time. I mean, when I grew the beard, I had a very hard time. People told me you can't get a job, you never get married, so on and so on. So the point I'm making here, I know it's not difficult, but Johnny, you know the truth from falsehood. And when you know it, you have to accept it. And and you're not a very religious person. You said, that's okay. Look, the first thing is the belief. When you have the belief, slowly you will grow. You will learn. You will practice more and more and more. But Johnny, if you hear the truth, you have to accept it. Why would you say so? Because you're a truth seeker. Are you not a truth seeker? Right. No, I'm, I'm just, just. I'm, I'm gonna. Just I'm gonna go you. pray Asr. Yeah. So I'll let you guys. Uh... Shake before you go. Before you go, we're gonna finish now on. anyway because Daniel versus okay. David is on in half an hour. I want. I want to give everyone a chance to make their popcorn and get their kettles on <laughs> and all that stuff. Yeah. So we're only gonna have a three-hour session today anyway. But Sheikh Jazakallah Khair for joining. Um, what I'm gonna say to Johnny is this: over the next two weeks, we'll have a back and forth through Facebook or email or whatever it may be, all right? And by the time two weeks rolls by, you're no longer going to be a Christian. Then you can come back onto the arena and That's challenge Muslims. Um, well, I'm telling you, we've already demonstrated it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've already demonstrated it. You haven't, got, you haven't got a leg to stand on. You'll be going debating Christians once after this session. Okay, and then what will happen in two weeks' time, if you're willing, you can come back on the arena... And then you can challenge Muslims as to why what we believe is true. So I truly believe in two weeks' time you'll come back here as an agnostic or a theist at least. A theist, I would say. Or not Muslim, knowing which religion Allah. is true. I would say I'm almost that already. So we're I know not far away from know, that. You know. This so, stream, once Johnny, you rewatch this and you research what's been said to you and realize everything that's been said to you is correct, you are no longer to believe Christianity is tenable as a reliable source of, of truth. Yeah, John, I saved all my, of what you said, guys. My my advice to you, and I mean this with pure sincerity, may Allah make us all mukhlis sincere, um, is tonight, don't worry about the debate aspect or your culture or your background or family. Just tonight, when you're not with anybody, uh, raise your hands and pray to the one creator, the one God, the one who made you, the one that guided you to this stream, and ask that creator for guidance. Okay? Just ask that creator, whatever the truth guide me to it, right? If you want but, to but, but wait, wait, research, wait, wait, wait. I would have to pray in Arabic for that to actually matter, right? No, 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 no. You can pray in any language you can like, in French, in English, in Swedish. Romanian, in but Russian. But why do you guys pray in, in Arabic, though? No, 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 it's a different. I, I, I will answer you just real quick, right? We keep our ritual prayers in Arabic to preserve the meaning as it was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But when we supplicate, when we make dua, we do it in any language that's our natural tongue. God, Allah, hears all languages, knows all languages, and responds in any language. So the last thing I'm going to say, Johnny, is in whatever language you're comfortable, whatever language you dream in, in that language, ask that one creator for guidance. And if you want to know the references and things, you can check the One Message Foundation. We go through these verses. We have them on the on the screen. And then call, email Hamza and tell him, look, I'm ready to be a Muslim. So Thanks, you can come man. up to the next arena and you can challenge Muslims as to why we believe Islam is true. And we'll present it. I, I think, honestly, in two weeks' time, I, I'll convince him anyway. I think so. You'll be, taking shahada. <laughs> You'll be coming up to the arena to take a shahada. Inshallah. I look forward to that guy, by the way. So huh? I, think, I think you're, I'm you're a, a soft-hearted guy. guy. I, I don't think you're hard-headed at all. I think no. you're soft-hearted. Johnny, see, and I regarding, regarding uh, what I believe in and the uh, principles, you know, so. No, no, but uh, here's the thing, I, Johnny. I believe... Johnny, Johnny, to be a Muslim, you only have to believe two things. There's no jumping through hoops, yeah? <clears throat> but... believe two things. And I'm pretty sure the first thing you already believe, and that is the only one worthy of worship is God Almighty. You believe that, isn't it? Yes. Of course. So that's the one thing you have to believe to be a Muslim. And the second thing you need to believe to be a Muslim is that Muhammad, peace and bless me upon him, is a messenger of God. Okay. I see. That's it. Believe, believe, believe those two John? things. And you already believe one. So all I need to do is convince I you. I cannot do the second one. No. Oh, I'll convince okay. you. No problem. Johnny. 
Look, if someone can convince you, one second, one second, Sheikh. Johnny, if somebody can convince you that Jesus is God and that the Bible is a reliable source of information and salvation lies through the resurrection of Jesus, I'm pretty sure I can convince you that Muhammad, peace and blessings upon him, is a messenger of God. Pretty sure. Johnny, okay. look up the video that we have, uh, the moon split. Uh, you can put one message foundation or Uthman, just watch it. And then uh, I've seen a little so bit well. of it actually. You presented watch the, the whole thing from uh, NASA. Uh, watch the whole thing and the yeah. end of it, inshallah. Uh, email Hamza to take your shahada. But Hamza, you gotta save him for the <laughs> you next, think that's uh, enough, next huh? show. I think so. Yeah. Hey, Johnny, before you leave, you don't have to answer this, but what nationality are you? What's your background? If you don't mind me asking, Sweden, Sweden. You're like, you're like uh, Swedish, Swedish, or you're like another nationality living in Sweden? Uh, another na nationality living in Sweden. Are you Albanian? No, I'm not. Okay. Sorry, I'm from uh, Balkan. Well, the, Albania is in Balkan. What? Yeah, yeah, but Macedonia. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. I, I could well, hear the accent. If you, if oh you really? Pray, no, nah, I don't believe that. <laughs> That's a wild guess, man. What's your, what's your, what's your, <laughs> is it Croatia? Is it Bosnia? Danny, which language are you most comfortable in? Yeah. Swedish or Greek? Uh, or? To be honest, English. Swedish. English is almost better than my Swedish. Excellent. So pray in English tonight to that one creator <laughs> to guide you. All right? All right, man. Thanks All for the opportunity, guys. For you. All right. Johnny, you, Johnny. Johnny. Listen, message me on Facebook Hamza's Den or Hamza's Den 4 on Gmail. All right, man. Let, let's get in touch. Let's have a conversation. Sure, sure. Let's and, do you, you, and, and obviously, when we do it privately, it won't feel as much pressure. Yeah, since I'm um, basically... <laughs> I don't know how many people are watching here, but fifteen hundred and seventy-seven. Oh wow! All right. <laughs> all, all, and, and inshallah, all of them will be praying for your guidance. Whoever is exactly. watching, Allah. everyone can see you're a good guy, Johnny. Let's inshallah. hope they are, man. He is. All Thanks, right, guys. Take care. Take right, care, Johnny. Bye. -bye. Leave the shahada. You, when I come on, we'll do it together. Right? It's not. Right, it's not if. It's when. Inshallah. Nice. Do you want to? Do you want to give all Terry right, a quick two minutes? I'm out. I gotta make salah because it's getting late. All right, Terry, next time, guys, mate. Because uh, I'll let you guys have fun with them. Do you want to? Do you want Terry back on? Or I think we're done, aren't we? Thirty two. Um, do, do anyone want to add anything to what's been said? That's Abdullah Yusuf, are you asleep? <laughs> I uh, I mean, I know we're gonna leave soon because everyone wants to go see the debate. So I mean, I have a quick announcement if that's okay. Yeah, that's cool. Cool, man. So I will be briefly coming out of retirement on my YouTube channel tomorrow on Sunday. I have to release a series of videos uh, refuting an anti-Islamic individual. And I just thought, you know, if you guys want entertainment, you can watch tomorrow on Sunday. So Who is the anti-Islamist individual? Or is that the surprise? You have to figure it out. Oh, okay. So I'm pretty sure it'll be in the thumbnail, no? Yeah, you'll see. Okay, so that's uh, everybody wants to check out uh, Andalusian project. The link is in the description of the this particular stream, anyway. So all, everyone's all the speakers, pondering soul, calamology, um, and uh, Andalusian project, and One Message Foundation. All the links are there. Mashallah. Um, all right, and um, I'll let you go then. Assalamualaikum, Jazakallah Khair for joining us. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum salam Khalil, you're still here, mate. You're not going anywhere yet. Okay. <laughs> just uh, so what? Just, just you might as well big yourselves up, man. Because I was looking at your channels, your YouTube channels, man, and the, it's embarrassing that I've got more subscribers than you guys. <laughs> well, yeah, we're, you we're, guys are so knowledgeable, man. No, I just, we're, we're, I just use you guys. Uh, we're your students. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 yeah, that's that's what I like to think. But no, Alhamdulillah. Um, anyway, so Kalamology is uh, Khalil's channel, mashallah. You could see today from the stream the knowledge he has. So go check that out, inshallah. Yes. Anything coming up? <laughs> yeah, shout out. Go on Clubhouse. He's there. Uh, these ask these Muslims. I think is that is that the group you're in? No, Kal Kalamology Interfaith Talk. So Kalamology Interfaith Talk on Clubhouse. Go check him out there, inshallah. All right, my brother. Salam alaikum. Until yeah, next time. Thank you very much. Ah, we saved the best till last. I've yeah. I've been useless today, bro. I just uh, <laughs> I wanted to step back because it was it was nice. And to, I didn't to be honest wanna... with you, for the first half of the stream, I stepped back. Let all you guys dig into this philosophy and biology and chemistry and all that stuff. And do you get me? But when, yeah. Christian, when a Christian comes on, 
it's another story. <laughs> yeah, well, that's one of your specialities, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's my mastermind oh. specialist subject. Although I'm getting good at this, um, this God hypothesis things. You know, this biology and that. Like, like oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You still, you I've still got this read. book now, man. Signature in the cell. Where's your book club? It's coming. Oh. Two weeks' yeah, time, the Discord club? will be up and running. Two weeks' time. If you see the two Discord, weeks. right, it's, it's, it's a monster. Listen, I'm sure it was two weeks ago, about two months ago, bro. Look, go check out. Weeks. Look, listen, when you see this Discord channel, right, it's something else. It's massive. Inshallah. So, inshallah, we're going to have the book club there, most definitely. So, we're going to do this book. Return of the God Hypothesis. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I'm looking forward right. to. Just a quick one. How you doing, Ray? Oh, come, come on. on. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, man. Why would you? are going to say, oh, we're afraid, we're afraid. No, we need uh, to be out today because of the Daniel and David time, um, debate. Uh, all right, Shay, I'm going to let you go. Tomorrow, as always. Tomorrow, yes. Inshallah. Inshallah. Have we'll this time. Inshallah. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. And that's it, guys. Another arena. It was really good. We only had two guests or three guests, but um, I enjoyed the first guest just to try to unravel him. Um, I enjoyed Terry a little bit to get away from all that kind of philosophy and such. Um, and then Johnny was beautiful. Alhamdulillah. So, uh, yeah, we're finishing the stream now. You've got 24 minutes to go make your popcorn, make your tea or whatever it is you're going to do um, because you've got the Daniel... Uh, Hakikachu and David Wood debate. You need to go check that out, inshallah. All right. Uh, you know, I'm not going to clash with them, even though I think the arena would do the job. I don't want to make you guys choose here or here. So, alhamdulillah, go enjoy yourselves. Go watch it, inshallah. Um, and I will see you. I shall see you on Sunday for the chill out stream. Uh, what channel is it? Oh. I don't know. Um, some stupid. I don't know why. Oh, what, what anyone know what the channel is? Um, anyway, modern day debates. There we go. Modern day debates channel is a debate, and make sure to bombard David Wood with questions. Modern day debates. I don't know why he didn't use one of our platforms. Why are they going on to these flipping platforms? Unless it's supposed to be neutral, but I don't even think it's even neutral, is it? Or maybe it is. I don't know. Anyway, I hope you've learned something tonight. Uh, alhamdulillah. I've, I've hope you've learned how to deal with Christians. You can do it the Sheikh Uthman way, going for verses. You can show the contradictions. You can show the um, inerrancy of, sorry, the, the errors within the Bible. You can demonstrate the challenge of the authorship. You can challenge the Holy Spirit concept. There's so many ways you can dismantle Christianity. So, um, I hope, I know, Saran, you enjoyed it. We're waiting for you to come on, Saran, because I know you're a Christian. I know you've, you're holding on to your faith all you can, but you keep coming to the streams and we're going to chip away at you. So, inshallah, I look forward to seeing you. All right, guys. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Here comes the lion.